much of the history of American automobile racing began on fairgrounds tracks. Here at Wisconsin State Fair Park, they've been racing cars since 1903. Today, the Sky Glider still meanders over the buildings where some of the finest local delicacies are being served. The NASCAR Nationwide Series is the attraction, bringing fans through the turnstiles. They'll be cheering for their local favorite, watching to see if a young up-and-comer can pull off the upset, or if the two headliners just in from the coast can come from the back and take the trophy west. Plenty of excitement for a summer Saturday night at the races. Welcome you to NASCAR Countdown. One of America's great racing states, Wisconsin, is the setting with the NASCAR Nationwide Series making its once a year visit to the historic Milwaukee Mile. The weather's beautiful, the cars lined up and ready to go. Driver introductions are about to begin down along the front straightaway. It's already been quite the busy day here this morning. There were two practices for the nationwide cars. Justin Allgaier had a tough time of it. Ooh, it's getting ready to hurt right now. Bam, right in the nose, and that just wiped out a car. That's too bad. Short, hard, and flat around this racetrack. Backup car for the 12 team. He will start from the tail end of the field tonight. He'll have some good company back there. Camping World Truck Series race. Rained out last night, ran at 12.30 local time. Ron Hornaday won it on his 50 first birthday. Don't, surprise, surprise. Yeah, don't tell those old guys they can't do it, man. That's, That's for right. sure. Ron was up on the wheel. We get to see him tonight, too. Then it was Nationwide Series qualifying. You just saw that Eric Darnell won the pole, his first in just his sixth try in the Nationwide Series. There's a young man with a long family history here, Darnell is. Let's hear from him. He's with Shannon Spake. And Darnell also considers this somewhat of a home track, located about 40 miles north of where he's from. He's about 40 miles south of here. We know your car is fast and qualifying. How confident are you that it can stay up front during the race? Well, right now I'm not not too sure. Uh, we weren't real good in practice. The Northern Tool and Equipment Ford wasn't where we needed it to be in the second practice session. So uh, we kind of threw some wholesale changes at the car. Um, you know, we, we did a, a lot of stuff. Uh, kind of got it closer to, to where our teammates were at. Uh, and I think it helped out, at least in qualifying. Um, those guys were pretty good in practice in a longer run on old tires. And we're hoping that that's going to translate over to us in the, in the race tonight but um, all the guys in the crew Mike Kelly and everybody did a really good job so far um, the car was fast and qualifying just hoping to keep it up front um, I also got to say hi to Eddie Pardue he's not here today um, you know hope uh, hope everything's going well over there um, you know we miss you here at the track so. definitely everyone thinking about Eddie Pardue it is a family affair here for Eric Darnell his dad and his grandfather will be here watching the race tonight Dave Shannon, the Dairy State has long been a driver state for NASCAR with a focus on this Milwaukee mile. Of course, Dave Marcus brought us wing tips in addition to wins. Dick Trickle has one of the most unique names in racing and is also one of the winningest short trackers in the United States. Alan Kowicki, the 92 champion, did it his way. And Matt Kenseth, the quiet and determined champ, also from Wisconsin, in addition to Mr. Scott Wimmer, with six wins in the Nationwide Series, would love to make number seven right here at the Milwaukee Mile, where he started coming to, as he would tell it, since he was about four and a half years old. Scott, uh, talk about the history of this place and how it affects you when you put on the helmet and uh, sit behind the wheel here. Well, it, it's got a lot of memories. Uh, this is really the first race track I remember coming to. I remember sitting down in uh, top of my parents' motorhome. I watched my Uncle Larry Dejan win an uh, ASA race here in two, uh, 1980. So I've been coming here a long time. Uh, a lot of family and friends come out here. I used to live in the city, so that even makes it a little more special. You're in a very fast race car tonight, Scott. How good is it, and can it win? Uh, it, it's really good. Brian Campy, all the guys. Uh, fast and all Chevrolet's been good since we unloaded it. Um, we were one of those cars I had to qualify in the race, so I took it a little bit easier than I wanted to, but ended up seventh. And uh, looking forward, you got to make adjustments all night long. I got the best crew in the business on pit road, and uh, maybe I'll get my first one here. All right, well, let Scott make his way to introductions. He will be our in-race reporter tonight, so you can follow him all night long. And if you'd like to ask him a question, log on to ESPN.com slash NASCAR, keyword, ask the driver, and submit your question to Scott. Now, I've got a few questions of my own. Who's going to win tonight? How are they going to do it? And how much fun are we going to have watching it? For that, we need to go to Brad Doherty, Rusty Wallace, and Alan Beswick in our ESPN Pit Studio. Alan, what do you think? Uh, David, don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> and 
<laughs> yes, lots of fun. Uh, you know, our, our ESPN Pit Studio, this was waterfront property yesterday after yeah. about three and a half inches of rain fell, but high and dry today. Rusty Wallace, a five-time winner at this racetrack in various competition, USAC Stock Cars ASA, a place with so much history. What's it mean to a driver to come here? A lot of history, and every time I came here, man, I was just so pumped up. This was my Daytona 500. I mean, I had this baby circled on my caliber, Brad, and I whole team was fired up. I was fired up, and I won a lot here. I won five times. It was because of my mental attitude, I think, just wanting to come here yeah. and win so bad because there's so much history here. Yeah, there's a lot of history. I mean, this is the oldest continually operated track. It goes back to 1903. That's just a little bit before Rusty started racing here. So it's an old <laughs> racetrack. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Uh, this is the end of the June stretch of separate site races for the Nationwide and Sprint Cup Series. The guys trying to pull the upsets haven't fared so well so far. Oh, I've been a little disappointed in that. We haven't seen any of these young guns get to victory lane. I mean, we've seen names like Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Eric Darnell, who's sitting on the pole, Trevor Bain. They made a big splash. But the thing we have figured out is that Kyle Busch kid is <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> oh, no, wait, but you guys just can't give up now. You don't give uh, up. There's still yeah. an opportunity stretch going right now, yeah. and that's in all these drivers' heads. You're thinking, man, this is a stretch where if I'm going to get my first win, I can get it done right here. And the way I'm looking, there's one more right now immediately yeah. Before we go to Loud next week, New Hampshire up there. And uh, so it's on your mind. Don't give up. Stay doing it. You can still do it. Yeah. I want to talk about a couple guys trying to take advantage of opportunities. Got Brad Coleman in the Joe Gibbs Racing 20 car that Joey Logano won in at Kentucky last week. And Stephen Light in the Childress 29 car tonight that Jeff Burton and Clint Boyer also drive. These guys only get 8 to 12 shots a year in those rides. Which is the best choice for a young driver? Eight races in a top shelf ride or a full season in a lesser funded team? Well, I spent all that evening with Brad Coleman and uh, talked to he and his dad, and then I talked talk to Russ Light, Stephen Light's dad, and both said that they want to have their young men in great race cars with a chance to win, because if you win, you get the notoriety and the opportunity. In my opinion, I totally disagree with that. I think because of the situation these two guys are in, they're in great race cars. Stephen Light is compared to Jeff Burton. He's compared to Clint Boyer. Uh, you're looking at, at Coleman. He's compared to Joey Logano, Denny Hamlin. These are four of the five of the best race car drivers in the world. And if you don't live up to their standards, you're taking a step backwards. So I think it's a bad thing for them. Yeah, people are going to look at you and say, look, I mean, you're in a good hot rod here. I mean, those guys are winning. And if you don't win, yeah. they're going to be labeled as no good. That's right. all there is to it. Stephen Light starts six tonight. Brad Brad Coleman second on the grid, Jamie. Well, he's one of those drivers. He's lived on both sides of the fence. Last year, you were full-time with the lesser-funded team. This year, you're with the powerhouse of Joe Gibbs. What do you think is the smarter decision for a young driver? Well, the way the economy was, this is really the only way to go. I mean, it's it's real tough right now, and uh, I love Joe Gibbs racing. Two years ago, I raced for him, had a great year, and I, I, I my goal was to get back with him, and we made it happen. And, it's just really paid off. I mean, Nashville had a great race and qualified second here, been up top in all the practices. Just, I feel really blessed to be here. He's had one other start this year with Joe Gibbs. He finished in the top 10. I think he made the right decision, Alan. We will watch Brad Coleman tonight again from the outside of the front row. Still to come on NASCAR Countdown, it's been the year's toughest commute for Kyle and Carl, and they have to start at the back in this race. Points, planes, and the potential for another last to first run in a bit. But up next, the plentiful pit road speeding penalties last week at Kentucky. Problem or pure coincidence? There are differing opinions depending on who you ask. American Steel, baby, that's what I'm talking about. There we go. Hey, that's you're so start. old. Do you have one of those things? <laughs> that's Rusty's first motorcycle right there. <laughs> <laughs> I stop there. NASCAR Countdown, brought to you by Nationwide Insurance. Play Driver Pick'em presented by Nationwide Insurance on ESPN.com for a weekly shot at $500. You thought I was kidding about waterfront property. There was some rain here yesterday. Uh, Carl Edwards, the defending winner of this race, is hoping to bounce back tonight after recording a 20th place finish last Saturday in Kentucky. A finish created in part by multiple pit road speeding penalties that left him and others a bit perplexed. Oh my goodness, we've had so many speeding penalties on pit road. We always check the system before the event starts. We're very confident in our pit road scoring system. And that's where those crew chiefs got to tell them, be careful. Do not speed. Carl Edwards was booked at going 0 .03 miles per hour over the speed limit. We got to do a pass for him. There is no way. There is no way. Pass the cone is where they say they're getting you. You got to hold your speed. Pass the cone. I don't have any trouble with speeding on pit road ever. The freaking thing is messed up and they can kiss. Well, I won't say that because I know they're trying their hardest. But they owe us one because their thing is broke. 
it broke. The fact is, um, you know, like it or not, NASCAR messed up the, the final uh, pit road exit link. Hopefully they'll just admit they screwed that one up and, uh, and we'll go on. We're confident with the results that we have, so we're good with the results. Well, speed limit is kind of counter to a racer's instinct of going as fast as he can, but it is an extremely important safety measure to protect the pit crews that work in that confined area. So let's talk about how it works. Our champion crew chief, Ray Abraham, is upstairs in the booth getting ready to call the race with Rusty and Doc Punch. Ray, how does it work? Well, Alan, it's simply time and distance. Let's use the Telestrator. There's a line across the opening of pit road. Goes straight across. And they put a loop in there. There's a transponder on the back of every car that NASCAR monitors the, the cars. All the scoring is done. There's a line crossing, and there's wires across pit roads at several different distances. Now, not all those distances are the same. NASCAR knows the, the distance between these two lines, and that electronic scoring monitor transponder on the back of that car tells them the time it takes for the car to travel from the first line to the second time line. And there's a computer in the, in the NASCAR tower that calculates that time and speed. So it's electronically done, and as soon as it is, it calculates that the car is over, a red light pops up on a computer in the NASCAR tower. All right, so that's how it works on pit road where the scoring is concerned. How does it work from the cockpit of a race car? For more on that, let's go to our Craftsman Tech Garage and Tim Brewer. Tim? Thanks, Alan. When a NASCAR tower notifies the crew chiefs that the pace car is at pit road speed, the drivers simply pull up behind the pace car as close as possible. That's when they're going to calibrate the tachometer, bring the engine up to what they think is the safe speed that the pace car is running, and they're going to calibrate it right then. Then when you come back, through the race, when you're coming in pit road, you've got a caution area, then you've got a green light. Each one of these lights represent 100 RPMs, and that's the margin of error right there. But when you get up and the red light comes on, tack starts flashing, that's when you've exceeded pit road speed, that's when you're gonna get a speed and penalty. And Tim, the key there is for the driver to hit that button at a very precise time. Exactly, Alan, because if that pace car is at that exact speed, the car should be okay with that interval that NASCAR's allowed. But if the pace car is a little bit fast or a little bit slow, it's going to mess those calculations up. All right, Tim, we appreciate uh, a look at what uh, some of the tachometers look like inside the car. So that's how it works. Now back to Kentucky for a minute. There were 27 pit road speeding penalties called, 25 of them for speeding exiting the pits. The average per race this season of speeding penalties, by the way, up to that point, was five. So, Rusty, Brad, and we'll bring Ray back into this conversation as well. Was something wrong, or were there just a lot of driver mistakes? Well, as my good friends in the Highway Patrol call it, they call it pacing. Not that I know anything about that, getting yeah. a ticket or anything, <laughs> but it's pacing. But I'm going to tell you what my opinion is, and I am not into conspiracy theories and all that stuff, but I think the pace car could have set pit road speed just a little bit too quick, and it's unverifiable now because it makes no sense to have that large a number in dis you know, discrepancies of 27 all the way back to 5 and 6 and 7. doesn't make any sense. I tell you, I get all the numbers and everything that everybody told us and about the loops and all that. But I will tell you, when this thing's all said and done, there's, there still is a bit of a mystery surrounding this thing. I talked to Joe Ballish this morning. He said, Rusty, the only thing I can figure is Kentucky Speedway put some yellow barrels down there at the entrance, where I mean the exit where they were exiting. Maybe that distracted the drivers or something. I said, Joe, you're going to go into driver's meeting today. You know you are. They're going to, these drivers are really going to drill you and ask you about this. What are you going to tell them? You're going to tell them that all the drivers that are really good quality people are all wrong? And he said, yeah, I am. <laughs> I said, okay. Pace car. It was pace car. Yeah. Ray, you got a thought? Well, what we didn't discuss is that NASCAR already gives those guys a five-mile-an-hour grace period. So the teams know that. And then they calculate how many more RPM they can go over what the pace car speed is. And as I said, not all those lines are the same. And it just happens at Kentucky and here at Milwaukee, that last segment is the shortest segment. So could be 100 RPM or so, but small margin of error. And like I said, 0 .03 miles an hour over. If those guys are pushing it and they gas it up just a little bit, could have been over. If pace car's too fast, you're toast, and you'll never know it again. But you're it's not better. a conspiracy theorist at all. <laughs> you got to stir it. Yeah, try all to right. tell Carl Edwards that. <laughs> <laughs> a look at more of the top qualifiers for tonight's race. Brendan Gone will start third tonight, hoping less than five hours from now he's driving into victory lane. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Uh, with a substitute crew chief tonight in the Roush Fenway 16 car, but another good qualifying run. He starts fourth.
And Brad Kozlowski, third in points. The last time the series raced on a one-mile track, he ended up with the trophy. Remember Dover? He starts fifth in this one. All ready to go do their high-speed racing dance tonight at Milwaukee. Speaking of the high life. I've got a couple right of those there, right there. Oh, you, man. you have two. I'll tell you what, son. <laughs> Barley pops, baby. <laughs> On the Motorsports Calendar, NASCAR now presented by Five Hour Energy, the Sonoma Pre-Race Edition. Note the special time, 11 a.m. Eastern, tomorrow on ESPN2. We'll wrap up the racing weekend with our NASCAR Now Monday Roundtable. Five Eastern, Ricky Craven, Ray Evernham, and Mike Wallace join me in the studios. Uh, over on ABC, the IndyCar Series, Iowa Corn Indy 250, tomorrow 1 Eastern on ABC, Rusty Wallace Design Racetrack. And next weekend's Nationwide Series race is on ABC. Note that it is presented by CeCe's Pizza from New Hampshire, 2.30 Eastern time next Saturday. Kyle Busch will do it. Winning twice in one day, Kyle Busch makes NASCAR history. Kyle Busch, he wants the lead. They'll race side by side. Kyle Busch spins in front of the field. Sorry, guys. Let's get for race too early. That's my fault. There was a problem in the 18 pits. Go, oh, 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 oh. What'd you say about coming back, Jeff? We rolled a tire. We had a tire getaway. The last pit stop. Every time I come to this racetrack yo fuck kyle bush does it at texas we got it guys good job you guys are on kyle bush will get win number three in 2009 and guys that right rear tire is down on kyle bush tough break for kyle had a dominant night going hey that's part of this sport one day you're on top and it it can humble you pretty quick let's see if the monster's gonna bite somebody else that's pathetic right there. Guys, keep your mouth shut. Just work on this race car. Keep your mouth shut about this. Kyle Busch comes out of turn four and wins for the first time in Nashville, Tennessee. Woo! Everybody's going to get a piece of guitar tonight. Oh, yeah. Well, even with some of the bumps in the road pictured there, it's been quite a year for Kyle Busch. He's led the most laps in six races that he hasn't won, led the most laps and won four times. All told, he's dominated 10 of the 15 races this year and has a 137-point lead over Carl Edwards in the championship starting the night. For Kyle and Carl, this is the most difficult weekend of their chasing two championships adventure with the Sprint Cup Series race at the Infineon Raceway Road Course in Sonoma, California, some 2,175 miles away from this NASCAR Nationwide Series race here at the Milwaukee Mile. Uh, both practiced their Sprint Cup cars in Sonoma earlier today. Boarded the jet for the three-hour flight to Milwaukee, arriving here just before 5.40 local time. Kyle arriving first. By the way, they'll have to reverse that trip after the checkered flag later to be ready for tomorrow's cup race. Uh, as for tonight, they both have to start from the back since somebody else qualified their cars. It will be an interesting night for them at the end of what has been a very interesting day. Check out the schedule for these guys. Well, that is a long day. But I tell you, these are two of the best athletes and two of the best drivers in the business. It's well worth the trip, and I I'm sure the fans are very appreciative. Well, I tell you, they had to negotiate thunderstorms, getting here, get around, yeah, all that, that type of stuff. Off. Man, that's tough getting here. That's, that's hard on you. I'm telling you, it is. Could pay off with a trophy tonight, Dave. It sure could, Alan, but because of all that travel, Kyle Busch is now doing something that uh, usually happens at the beginning of the weekend. He sits in the seat for the first time to make sure everything is in its proper place so that he can drive the car as fast as he can. Johnny Sauter practiced and qualified this race car, and right now Jason Clements is making sure that everything is in the right place for Kyle. He's been sitting in the seat here for about five minutes and has fitted the steering wheel, and it looks like they've got it put back together again. Kyle, we'll jump in here right now. With this racetrack being as flat as it, as it is, and the banking not there to help you with your race to the front how difficult will it be tonight uh, it'll be difficult you know you got to work your way through here aero seems to be a big thing especially back in traffic you know you fight just not being able to get down force and stuff and a flat track like this you need all you can get so you know we'll take our time and uh, it's a long race so hopefully we can get up there and you know we'll see how far we can get see if they can put the 18 car in victory lane again shannon Dave, last season here in this very race, Carl Edwards started in the back of the field, of course, because someone else qualified his, his car because he was out in Infineon. Started 39th. You see him passing Clint Boyer right there. Went on to win this race. He had a new crew chief, Drew Blickenserfer, on top of the pit box. 
went on to win seven races in 2008 and of course contend for the championship. Right now, no changes with this team. Is it as simple as one change? What you had last year really kickstarted your season. If you could put your finger on it, what does this team right now need to kick it into high gear? Well, we just uh, we just need to be faster, and um, we've been getting faster. Mike Beam's been helping us a little bit. Dan Stillman and I've been uh, learning, you know, how to work with one another better. And hey, the last, you know, Kentucky was really bad, but the, the weeks previous to that, we've been the best we've been all year. And uh, you know, I'm proud of my guys. I'm proud of Dan and. You know, uh, Daryl Morrow, he, he reminded me, he said, you know, remember a year ago, we, we turned it around right here. So hopefully we can have a good night here and, and get headed in the right direction. Well, he's got a good starting position, of course, in the back of the field. That's where he was last season. So we know he can, yeah, good starting position. So we know he can come from the back and win this race here in Milwaukee. Alan? All right, Shannon, thanks. The gap between Edwards and Bush has grown over the past month from 37 points after Darlington to now 137 points five races later. Not a trend that can continue long if you are Edwards. Uh, given how Kyle's running and what happened to Carl at Kentucky last week, how important is this race to Edwards? This is very important, Edwards, because, I mean, no matter what he says, you still got to get from the back to the front. Aerodynamics is very, very important here, Brad. Yeah. And they got to negotiate all these cars. And, you know, one mistake, he could get himself in a wreck and it could put him in a really deep pole then. Yeah. Both yeah. guys with no laps in the car. Big deal, not big deal. No, they're just too talented and they've got great equipment. They're the two best guys in this series. They will make their way to the front, either through charging or through pit stops. They're going to get there one way or another. All right, let's talk about this track that awaits them. It's a mile around, Rusty. Very little banking in the turns. What's the challenge for the driver? Oh, the challenge here is just so flat, it's unbelievable, Alan. And you can't stay in the throttle hard and negotiate these corners like you do on a bank racetrack. You find yourself slipping and sliding all through the corners. Look how flat that corner is, Brad. What yeah. happens if if you pick the throttle up too hard, the back end will kick out, or maybe the front end will take off, and you're just sliding all over the place. Yeah, I went out and talked to a couple of veteran guys, Mark Green and Mike Bliss, who've been around this place a, a long time, and they're saying what you're just saying, Ray, Rusty. It's real, real loose and slick. you got to be able to slide that race car and advance it. Not a lot of downforce, very flat, very fast, so the young guys get a little spooked. Old cats get them at the end of the day. All right, Mr. Five-Time Milwaukee winner, let's see if you can get up to the broadcast booth before I call your name out next. Well, I will tell you, <laughs> this is the hardest one to do that. I'll try, All right. and we'll see what happens. Like you threw that lake out there. Yeah, talk to you in a couple of minutes. Uh, some more guys with uh, that we'll keep eyes on throughout the night tonight. Jason Leffler loves this track's open wheel history. He's got some of that himself. Starts eighth in car 38. He's fourth in points. There's young Trevor Bain. Continues to impress. Uh, another top 10 qualifying effort. Yep. You watch out for this young man. He's good. And Eric Almarola's in the field. Remember his story yeah, a couple years ago? Yep. He was the winner, but wasn't in the car when the checkers waved. He's in the field tonight, starting 20th in car 40. What in the world? It's a polka, it's a man. Polka? It's like somebody's got bugs in their britches. Because, you know, he's not Racing history and tradition, they have got it in spades. Here at Wisconsin State Fair Park and the Milwaukee Mile, where they've been racing since 1903. Open wheel cars made the history for a lot of years. Look at the list of winners. Boy, that is incredible. Lyle Lancer, A.J. Ford, Parnelli Jones. It goes on and on and on. The great Juan Pablo races. Montoya, among those who took home the trophy in more modern times. And since 1993, the NASCAR Nationwide Series with drivers like Dale Earnhardt Jr. have added to the lore and history. Beautiful weather tonight for the 19th Nationwide Series race here at Milwaukee. 17 different winners in the prior 18 races. Five former winners in the field. Race fans, at this time, if I could ask you to please rise and remove your hats as the U.S. Marine recruiting Milwaukee Color Guard presents our nation's colors and remain standing for our invocation by Wisconsin Army National Guard Chaplain Major Douglas Hedman. And to perform our national anthem, kicking back entertainment, Nashville recording artist Billy Reasons. Almighty God, we are thankful Billy for the courage and the sacrifice. Almighty God, we are thankful Billy for the courage and the sacrifice. Almighty God, we are thankful.
of the men and women who serve in our armed forces. It is through their dedication to duty and your divine providence and the support of the citizens of this great community that we are able to be a blessing to others. It is times like this during the Milwaukee Mile when we can come and celebrate the blessings we have received. We pray that you will continue to bless America. Amen. for the technical difficulties at the beginning of the ceremony. Now the great thing about this sport or any other, finding out how it all unfolds. Quick note here, new crew chief this week for Steve Wallace, Truck Series champion crew chief Trip Bruce is now in charge. And uh, what an underdog to watch tonight. How about Bobby Hamilton Jr. in Randy McDonald's 81 car again this week. He qualified 15th. The engines fire at Milwaukee next. NASCAR Nationwide Series at the Milwaukee Mile, presented by Toyo Tires, is brought to you by Nationwide Insurance, official auto insurance partner of NASCAR, Toyota, moving forward, and AutoZone, because do-it-yourself doesn't mean you have to do it alone. Get in the zone, AutoZone. All right, we're good enough to do this. We got the best driver out there, we got the best pit crew right here, all right? Let's get a 6-0-1-3. One, two, three. 6 0 <laughs> Carl Edwards' team get ready to watch their guy try and come from the back. Quickly, our Jayski news and notes. NASCAR could still possibly roll out this division's version of the car of tomorrow next season. Reports are it could happen on the road courses and restrictor plates. Next chapter in the Jeremy Mayfield saga will happen July 1st. That's when Mayfield's request for an injunction against NASCAR allowing him back into competition will be heard. And after the latest Goodyear tire test at Indianapolis Motor Speedway, no less an authority than Jeff Gordon says the tire problem's history looks for a good race July 26th. And the grand opening of the NASCAR Hall of Fame, May 11th, 2010. Work progressing nicely on what should be a terrific museum in downtown Charlotte. Very excited about the Goodyear test. Stu Grant, I've talked to him. He's uh, vice president of North America with Goodyear. They have a great tire. It's going to be a great race. We're excited uh, to get to one of the, the crown jewels of the sport. All right, think about this. 51-year-old Ron Hornaday earlier today won the Camping World Truck Series 200 miler on his 51st birthday, the second time he's won a truck race on his birthday. A little did you know, 89 times a Nationwide Series driver's raced on his birthday, no one's ever won. Really? <laughs> Hornaday tries to change that tonight in Harvick's 33 Chevy. He starts 13th. If he wins, our boys in the booth have promised to sing happy birthday on the air. Dr. Jerry Punch <laughs> and Ray Everham will keep an eye out for that later. Did Rusty make it yet? He is almost here, Alan. Uh, not quite, not quite. He may have stopped off for like a broad or something. Hello, everyone. Glad to have you with us. You know, throughout the night tonight, Ray, the drivers will have two primary complaints in their car. And I want to get you to help us uh, solve these problems. Number one, this track is so flat, I can't get the car to turn. How do you fix that? 
Well, there's lots of things you can do. The old wedge, take a little wedge out. You can change some spring rate with some spring rubbers. You can drop the front tire pressure. You know, standard, raise a track bar, things like that. Okay, if you get the car to turn, and maybe it is turning in the corner, but the second complaint is usually, I can't get in the throttle quick enough. I can't get up off the corner. Give me some more forward bite. How do you do that? I just told you. You just got to undo everything that I just told you. <laughs> the problem here is that everything you do to fix the middle is going to hurt the exit. So it's going to be a tough balance all night as the track changes. Those guys are going to be putting wedge in, wedge out, track bar up and down. And you don't get a lot of pit stops on Nationwide. So the guys that get it right are going to be up front. What is the secret? I got to ask you quickly. You and Jeff Gordon were magic on the flat tracks at Phoenix and in New Hampshire. What's the key to getting a win on a flat track like this tonight? You've got to get that car to turn the center of the corner. But here and on the flat tracks, track position is very important. So at the end, and guys that maybe don't take tires or get that track position towards the end of the race are going to be key. The key calls on pit road can get it done here. Not only the driver, but the crew chief like Ray making the calls to come in and stay up front. Let's go track side to get the command to fire them up. And now to deliver the most famous words in motorsports, Grand Marshal of tonight's northerntool.com. Well, we apologize for the technical issues there with the microphone being able to be heard, but they have been given the command and the engines have fired on pit road. They will finish buckling up the window nets, make sure everything is strapped in and get ready to roll here momentarily. Well, tonight's in-race reporter grew up uh, in nearby Wausau, Wisconsin, and while he may have won six times in the NASCAR Nationwide Series, he has never won here at the home racetrack. When we return, we'll ask Scott Wimmer what it would mean to finally be able to go to victory lane here in the home track, the Milwaukee Mile in the home state of Wisconsin. For the eighth time in the history of the NASCAR Nationwide Series race cars here at uh, Milwaukee Mile, we have a first time pole winner. And tonight it was 26 year old Eric Darnell who grew up just 40 miles south of the racetrack, making only his sixth career start as a NASCAR Nationwide Series competitor. Brad Coleman starting outside him on row one. Brendan Gaughan coming off a top five finish last week. And Ricky Stenhouse Jr. starting in fourth position. There's the starting field across the top of your screen. Now, we will have onboard cameras in eight different cars tonight, including the 18 car, the uh, one car of Mike Bliss, who will start back in 18th spot. He is a former winner here in the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series. And of course, Jason Keller, who starts back in 27th spot. His last career win of his 10 victories came here at Milwaukee back in 2003. And we will have an onboard camera in the rear tire changer for the 01 of Danny O'Quinn. That is Joe Tater Baker. Tater, the nickname out of Corbin, Kentucky. <laughs> and he is quite a character, 22 years of age, and they'll be going over the wall, changing tires for the former rookie of the year. Well, the pits here, Ray, at Milwaukee are very challenging and some very interesting picks here. Now, Stephen Light in the 29 car actually has got an opening coming in, but a very difficult pit road. He's got to make a hard left and then a hard right to get in there. So I don't know if that's going to be that big of an advantage. Uh, car number 18, the, just a kind of a standard pit. Pit road's like pretty simple here. Uh, flat pit stalls are, are big to get in and out. I think that they probably picked that pit by who they're pitting around. A couple experienced guys, Scott Wimmer in front of them, Stephen Wallace behind them, and they might be playing the timing line game right there. And the best, the best spot on pit road is the opening leaving. Uh, by getting the, the pole, Eric Darnell gets that. The only thing is those first four pit stops run, or pit stalls run downhill a little bit, and so you've got to be careful that you don't have a tire roll away from you. And the white line down there, you see that first white line there, that is the race off line for scoring, and beyond it, the yellow line, that's the, the more important speed line. That is line. the line, Doc. <laughs> that, that's, that, that's the one that got everybody last week. And what they explained to us is when the front of your car hits that, and you can gas up right there at that orange dot, your transponder has already passed the last loop. Pit road speed tonight, a very slow but deliberate 35 miles per hour. Let's update some final stories in the pits. First here, Shannon Spake. Doc, following qualifying today, Brendan Gaughan said, I have my qualifying 
find Mojo back. Now that Mojo might have a name, and that name might be Shane Huffman. Shane Huffman, who is normally the car chief on the car, is currently acting as crew chief, while crew chief Brian Barry is serving an indefinite suspension for allegedly using a racial slur following the Nashville race. Now, Brendan Gaughan said Shane Huffman is the only guy who could have filled that position. He said he speaks my language, and right now, that language is fast. Jamie? Well, Shannon, one year ago, another guy who was fast, Brad Keselowski, he had a breakthrough performance. He started on the pole for the first time in his career, led 145 laps. He ended up finishing eighth. Now, he told me today that race changed the way he sets cars up and the way he races. So, this time around, he set his car up completely different. He said the plan is to be there at the end when it counts the end of the race. Dave? Jamie Stephen Light makes his third start here at the Milwaukee Mile, and qualifying sixth is by far his best start here. Now he'll hand off for the next three races to Cup drivers Boyer and Burton, so he hopes tonight in this 29 car he can lead the mile with a smile. Doc? Thanks, guys. Tonight's race is 250 laps on a one-mile racetrack, 250 miles. The pit road speed is 35 miles per hour. Pace car will run 40. A tank of Sunoco fuel will get you almost to 100 laps, so somewhere between 88 and 90 laps. And, Rusty, the, the banking here, 9 degrees, another, another uh, word for 9 degrees. It's flat. It, uh, you can say 9 degrees, 10 degrees, whatever you want, but when you're at this big track, it just feels flat as a pancake out there, and that's the toughest thing to negotiate is these long, flat corners. What about some of the sleepers not rusty pick a sleeper for us oh man i gotta pick the number 33 of ron horn today guy turned 51 years old he's driving a kevin harvick car that famous number 33 i think he's going to the front right hey if you're looking at sleepers you cannot over overlook brendan gone look he's got three top fives in the truck series including a win coming off a top five last week and i think uh, he's got a pretty good car tonight there have been four first-time winners at the Milwaukee Mile. Folks, the front four qualifiers, Darnell, Coleman, Gunn, and Stenhouse, have not won in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. And the two heavy hitters, first and second, the points are at the back of the pack. They've come all the way from Sonoma, California. Glad to have you with us as the NASCAR Nationwide cars roll to the green flag here in Milwaukee. Eric Darnell gets a good jump on the field right there. You want to get to that bottom lane early in this event. And boy, he just out shifted him on that restart. Did a great job. Stenhouse up on the outside of Brendan Gaughan. And that's a little dicey getting into turn three. And now Gaughan will get the position. You got to remember, this is a real flat racetrack. And you want to get those positions early while those tires are good and while they're real sticky. While those cars are handling good race, you well know. You can fix a lot of things with good tires. That's what they got right now. Absolutely, and they're going to have to settle in and find it and let those pressures come off. The track is a lot different than it was in qualifying, so we'll probably see some cars moving through the field both ways, going forward and some going backwards. 29 car, Scott Wimmer, he's our in-race reporter, and he's trying to make some moves early on here. We told you he's from Wisconsin, got a huge contingent of fans here to watch him. He's now moved into fourth position. Guys, the, you know, all these drivers will tell you that this race is going to change a ton. As this track cools down, these cars are going to change the handling characteristics, tighten up, and get better. Boy, take a look at Carl Edwards talking about moving from the back to the front. He's getting it done. He is up 17 positions, Ray. So much for patience. Yeah, well, you, you heard Kyle say he's going to uh, be patient, but heck, he's right behind him. So those guys, uh, if that's being patient, I'd hate to see if they were in a hurry. We talk about it being the toughest community. What's tougher, Rusty, coming all the way from California or coming from the back of the pack in Milwaukee? <laughs> hey, coming from California is not a problem at all. It's talking about coming from the back of the pack at this flat Milwaukee racetrack. But these cats are giving everybody a schooling right now. They're getting to the front pretty quick. Carl Edwards won from the back of the pack twice in 2008. Did it here at Milwaukee. Also did it at Memphis, having someone else qualify the car. As you heard Shannon say, it was this race a year ago that turned Carl Edwards' season around. This race was so important. We're looking to battle three wide off of turn four right now. Stephen Wallace, Carl Edwards, all of them racing on this long front straightaway. But Carl had a lot of confidence last year after starting from the back and driving to the front, and what, that led into seven victories for Carl. Eric Darnell is our leader. He had led only one lap in his career prior to uh, tonight. That coming a couple weeks ago in Nashville. But we're watching these guys come up in the back of the pack. The 18 of Kyle Busch. 
who, who will start on the outside of row one at Sonoma, California on Sunday in the Sprint Cup car. Uh, that car is just incredible on the bottom. I mean, he is, he is just flying around the bottom of the racetrack. You know, you would think it's going to have to take a little bit of time for Kyle Busch to get used to the way this car is going to handle tonight since he didn't have any practice in it whatsoever. But this guy's always adjusted pretty much. He's been doing this a lot this year, Jerry, with these double, double stints here. Battle for 11th position, 33, Ron Hornaday Jr. in the 99, the 18-year-old Trevor Vane. And Hornaday, who's already won one race today here on his 51st birthday, trying to get it done now in the Nationwide car. Yeah, and you know that practice that he got in that truck series, Ray, you know that had to help him get ready for tonight. Yeah, and, and we know that Kevin Harvick's cars seem to perform really well on the flat track. Whatever they've got going on in the front end, those things continue to turn. And remember, Ron said that his car was a little bit loose qualifying, but it was going to be really good when the sun went down. No, I really think that Kevin's cars are some of the best Chevrolets out there in the field. He's done a lot of work. I talked to Kevin last week. He was really proud of how his team is working and as you can see with the victory today in the truck series and how Ron's running in this particular nationwide car, it's, it's proven point. Look at behind the 33 car is the 99. Now, what better way for a young driver to learn than to follow someone like it, like a Hornaday through the field? And yeah, you're talking about Trevor Baines and our other shot there, Jerry. He's doing a great job, too. And look at Stephen Light racing with Brendan Gaughan right here, both on the bottom of the track. And that's a preferred groove around Milwaukee. You want to be right on the bottom if you can. Stephen Light coming off that disappointing 31st place finish last week at Kentucky, but uh, he has shown that he can get it done. And obviously for Richard Childress to put him in a car to share that car with Jeff Burton and Clint Boyer said a lot about Stephen Light's ability. He's done. He's, he is doing a great job right now. Those first four cars are, are really setting a, a good pace. Now, Rusty, you know, we're seeing the guys run, roll around the bottom a little bit more than we even did in practice. Will that groove stay down there, or do you think it'll move up as the rubber comes down? No, I think the groove's going to move up, Ray. I really do. Right now, it's a little treacherous up high, so they got to start working that groove up. And as the race goes on, I expect them to start getting off the very bottom of the track to make some passes. They're going to have to. And here is the 18 car, Kyle Busch, moving in. This would be 21st position that he takes away from Stephen Wallace. You see, most, you see Stephen motion him to the bottom of the racetrack. You know Kyle's got a good car. Looks like Stephen's got a pretty good car, too, as he's getting to the back of the field. Not a good qualifying run for him. Getting back up front there. Folks, Kyle Busch and Carl Edwards have not turned a single lap all weekend. Here's a good battle up toward the front. The 29 car, Stephen Light, diving beneath the 62. That is for third position. These are two pretty equally prepared Chevrolets. They both have the Richard Childress engines in them. Brendan Gaughan and Stephen Light. Good motors on the hood of these Chevrolets. So it is a Ford up front. A Toyota running in second, and then a couple of Chevrolets back third and fourth. 26 year old Eric Darnell set on the pole and has led the first 10 laps here in the NorthernTools.com 250. We come back to the NASCAR Nationwide Series at Milwaukee. Coverage presented by Toyo Tires. Eric Darnell in the 6, Brad Coleman in the 20, Stephen Light in the 29. And they have diced it up a little bit back and forth with Coleman trying to get that top spot and get around out in front. He had a look underneath. He was not able to pull it off. But uh, right now Darnell's hanging on. Good little fight. You know what, Alan? I spent all evening with Brad Coleman, and he told me that he only has an eight race opportunity. And the best thing that he could possibly hope for is a victory. He doesn't want a top 10 or a top five. He said he has to have a victory in one of these eight races to have had a successful stint. And right now, he's charging towards the front. Driving the car, Joey Logano won in at Kentucky. Not necessarily the machine, but for the team. That uh, 20 team for Joe Gibbs Racing. And right now, Darnell able to hold him off. 18 laps in, uh, working number 19 upstairs to Doc, Rusty, and Ray. Thanks, guys. How, how much do you think Brad Coleman wants to lead this race? I mean, Ray, he has not led a lap in competition since July of 2008 at Gateway. That's a long time ago. Well, Doc, I, you could just tell, when he, when he didn't get the pole, he was crushed. This kid's got eight races, like Brad said, to, to prove something. And now it looks like as the, as the tires have come up and it's leveled out, we're seeing some great racing. His car actually looks like it's a little better through the center of the corner uh, than Eric Darnell's. He's a little bit lower. But you know what's great? It's, already, it's like this two grooves on this track already. You got, you got 
Darnell running up a groove, and then you got the um, the, the 20 and the uh, uh, 29 running down on the bottom. You know, they, Ray, they told me, some of the drivers told me that that black part on the bottom of the racetrack, oh, Pat, uh, he's been doing this for the last couple laps, guys. Look at that top lane coming in with all that momentum. I was about to say some of the drivers told me that the bottom part of the racetrack, as the run goes on, gets a little slippery. So, you know, if it's slippery on the bottom, it kind of equals the track out. You can run top and bottom. Well, see, look how the six car is actually arcing it in the corner and opening up that bottom lane, but he's able to get up, get more momentum coming off the corner. Well, Doc, his car is not working as good as he wants on the bottom of the racetrack. You see, Coleman, he might have him now. He can just get in the throttle a little bit. Well, you see, look at that Darnell's got that run off the top, Ray. Wow, he, when you get off that corner, you can get more straightaway speed. What a what a great race. Two groove racetrack this early. Well, I guarantee you, Brad Coleman's getting mad right now. <laughs> Man, when you're a driver, you're getting pinched down on the bottom. Hey, these guys are racing good together, but just can't seem to clear him. Oh, there we go. Now he's got it. Now he's got hey, that clean air. These would be the first laps that Brad Coleman has ever led in a nationwide car here in three trips to Milwaukee. We're more on the 20 car. Let's go down to Dave. And, Doc, two weeks ago when Brad had his first ride with this team of the season, crew chief Dave Rogers told me we learned a couple of things. First of all, how I, the crew chief, run things. Secondly, what Brad responds to as a driver. In the week following, we had a lot of really good discussions on how we could both be better. That's obviously paying off tonight for Coleman. Shannon? Dave, Stephen Light right there in the 29 cars. Crew Chief Doug Randolph said, calm down, relax, let them use up your stuff, and then you can make your move. Of course, talking about the battle in front of him between the 6 and the 20 car, Doug Randolph told me that this has been a great week for Stephen Light and himself. He said they've been the best that they've been in a couple weeks in this 29 car. This is the same car that they had in Nashville, and that fact gives Stephen Light some extra confidence. Stephen Light now trying to make the move. That confidence paying off. It's nothing better than a, a driver who feels good about his race car and is confident in his ability. Yeah, I mean, confidence is everything in the world. you got to come into this particular racetrack and love this place in order to do good here. I said earlier, if you come in here not liking it, you'll get defeated. Stephen's got a good car. He's a good driver at this style of track, and that's got to be in his head. Dave. Guys, that's for Eric Darnell, our pole sitter, who has now lost the lead and is being challenged for second place. That car just having a little trouble turning in the middle of the corner. We've talked about it since the start of the show. Flat racetrack turning in the middle of the corner, the biggest thing, and it's a little bit tight in the center for Darnell. He hopes to have an adjustment on that car during the first round of pit stops. Okay, hey, Ray, what kind of adjustments are you talking about here? Tight in the center and having trouble getting down to the bottom of the racetrack. Well, he's going to have to describe to his crew chief exactly where and why he's tight. Is he off the brake and rolling? Is it is he too free on entry? Uh, they're probably going to make an air pressure adjustment, a, a, adjustment and a little bit of track bar right there to help him turn. Battle continuing here for second place. Darnell and Light. So it is Coleman in the Toyota as the leader. We have a Ford in second, a Chevy in third. Stenhouse back in fourth spot and Brad Kozlowski in fifth spot in the Chevy. What about the boys that came all the way from California? Well, folks, it didn't take long because in just 18 laps, Carl Edwards cracked the top 15. And now he is all the way up to 12th position. There comes cousin Carl, who's trying to turn his season around just like he did a year ago with possibly a victory here tonight. Now that car is handled a lot better than it was last week at Kentucky, that's for sure. You know, one thing I'm noticing, Ray, look at the noses of these cars. They're, all, they're a lot higher than we see every single week. A lot of guys tell me they want more mechanical grip instead of getting their noses real low and get that arrow. They say the place is so slippery. They want those wheels to work a little more independent. What do you think of that? I think that what you're seeing there is that they've got the noses nice and soft so they get down in the corner, but they've taken some rebound out of the front shocks because the rebound beats the front tires to death. It holds the air dam down, but they're finding out that mechanical grip from beating those tires up. As that goes away, the car gets tight anyway. We heard that Darnell was having trouble from the middle of the corner off. Now we'll see if Stephen Light can try him on the outside. And a little, little touch there. Light gets the momentum up off the corner. Looks like he'll have the spot. Hey, this track has got so much history behind it. I mean, you think of the drivers that have run here. Pernelli Jones, A.J. Foyt, Mario Andretti, Bay Darnell, Eric Darnell's grandfather. This, this is a really, really cool racetrack and a really great night tonight. We've got a great crowd here at Milwaukee. One of the largest ones I've seen at this racetrack of late. And, uh, boy, the fans are loving this early action. 
And I'll tell you, the kid that's doing a great job this early, again, is Ricky Steinhaus in that 16. Those Roush cars look really strong tonight. Yeah, you've I got know. Darnell, you've got Steinhaus in, in the 60 car, so it looks like Jack's got his uh, nationwide program going. You're exactly right. I've been looking at that, and uh, all those cars always run well. Look at Steinhaus. Dave, look at Steinhaus. He is just really running good out there. And, Rusty, last week you had a top 10 finish, and I asked, what was the biggest thing you learned from that because it's your best finish so far in your short nationwide career? He said, I learned to be patient. There was some uh, three-wide racing that I just backed out of. I finally learned from Crucci Fetty Pardue that I needed to be patient, and they reminded him of that again today. That was the first thing he said to me, so it looks like he's patiently racing his way to the front. Hey, Dave, remind me of one thing when this race is over to say Stenhouse instead of Steinhaus. <laughs> I'm working I'll, at it. Okay. I would never correct you, champ, but it is Stenhouse. Thank you. Well, the 16 car without their crew chief tonight, Eddie Pardue, back in, back in North Carolina with his four-year-old daughter who was ill in the hospital. And we all send along our best regards and best wishes for, for that family. And subbing for him is Matt Pucia, who is the uh, crew chief for Paul Menard in the Yates Racing Na NASCAR Nationwide Series team. But even without their leader here, this, this team is doing a heck of a job as the 16 car now holding stout in fourth position. 30 laps are in the books now 31 of the 250 and it is Brad Coleman who is showing the way Stephen Light, Eric Darnell and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. There's Matt Puscia who's got this car now in the top five. Brad Coleman continues to lead here at the northerntools.com 250 at the historic Milwaukee Mile in West Allis, Wisconsin. Coleman, after a 10-month hiatus, able to get back with Joe Gibbs Racing and had a top-10 finish at Nashville a couple of weeks ago. And he is now pulled away to almost a second lead over Stephen Light. There's Light in the 29 car, Richard Childress Racing. We have had a change for third position as the 16 car. Ricky Stenhouse has gone by his teammate to take the third spot away. There comes Stenhouse in the 16. And, and as uh, we heard during the pre-race show, the pole sitter there's a Brad Keselowski has also moved into fifth four spot behind Stenhouse. There comes the 88 car. There comes Keselowski and all these cars now have gone by our pole sitter Eric Darnell. You know Eric Darnell we, he talked earlier in practice he said look my car wasn't too good today. I mean they qualified real well and Ray I'm just wondering if he just didn't have a tight car pushing the front end and when these guys qualify they tape them off and it really makes them go faster but now looks like he's suffering because of that yeah and he's just gonna have to be patient because you know the tighter you are the tighter you get because it works that right front tire it builds up the tire pressure and the, the, the harder you push it the worse it gets so he just needs to keep that car in position so they make a pit stop they can adjust on it a uh, Carl's done a pretty good job getting from the back to the front he's in 11th position right now you see him battling gone right now just working the bottom of that track and uh, like I said earlier, much better car tonight than he had last week. Just what he did a year ago where he came from the back of the pack to the front and was able to pick up the win. Let's listen into some radio from the 60 car. Two rounds in the rear. We got to fix this brake bias and I'll make it like my cup car. Talking about brake bias as he tries to make a move underneath the 62 car. That would be for 10th position. So in 41 laps, he has come from the back of the pack all the way to the top 10. Mark it down as uh, Carl waves a thank you back to Brenda Gall. What's more on brake bias? Let's go down to our uh, ESPN Craftsman Tech Garage at Tim Brewer. Thanks, Doc. One of the adjustments a driver can make inside the car is actually the brake bias. When we set the brake pressures before the race, we usually set it about 50 pounds to the front. But Carl, if he doesn't like that, he's got a knob over here where he can actually turn the knob and a cable goes to a balance bar on the master cylinder where he can actually transfer brake pressure from the front of the car to the rear of the car. Because like Ray and Rusty were saying earlier, as you burn the fuel off, the weight transfers to the front and sometimes to make the car turn in the center of the corner you just need to transfer that uh, brake bias to the rear of the car thanks Tim and I guess the big concern is we, when you come down pit road you got to make sure you make some adjustments to be able to get the brakes and get into your pit stall without an issue uh, absolutely you don't want to lock the brakes up coming down pit road and slide the front tires or the back tires six position Eric Darnell and the challenge now from Scott Wimmer in the five car his second start in the car owned by Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Rick Hendrick, and he moves to the inside of the racetrack. And obviously, Darnell 
can't wait to get a yellow flag or get on the pit road to make some adjustments on his car. Well, right now is the time where the chassis are really starting to change a lot, Ray. They got 42 laps on their tires. Uh, what did you say, about 90 laps they can run on a complete fuel run here? Yeah, somewhere, because uh, it'll, they'll be a little bit shorter because of the pace laps on, the, on this first run, but they, everybody we talked to said tires made a huge difference. So, you know, it looks like the lap times have dropped off about a second or more. I will tell you, if the car if the car's pushing the front end right now, it should just get worse as the night goes on. And uh, we talked a lot about how this track is very dependent on mechanical grip. As we look at these two cats racing side by side in turn three, Jer. Great battle. Wimmer down on the inside and behind him, you see Hornaday moving in. And these are sixth, seventh, and eighth place there. Wimmer takes a sixth spot. Now you're going to ride along with Ron Hornaday. Driving for Kevin and Delana Harvick. See if he can make the pass. Talk about a good way to make a pass like he's doing it right now. Settle in on the bottom deeper than he can. Even if he slides up, he blocks the guy behind him and takes the position. Now, Scott Wimmer is our in-race reporter. We apologize. We were unable to talk to him during the free race. We had some frequency issues, but we have gotten those cleared up. And now, under the caution flag, we get an opportunity. We will be chatting with Scott Wimmer, the Wisconsin native there, hoping to get his first win here on the home track. Well, I like watching these guys get down the corner and taking the front of that car, Ray, and sticking it right behind another guy. It makes them real loose, makes them wiggle up the racetrack, and that's really compounded on a flat racetrack like this, especially getting into turn one and getting into turn three. Well, you heard Kyle Busch say at the beginning of the show how important he felt like aerodynamics were going to be, especially on a, on a flat track, because you need all that you can get, and the, that aerodynamic balance changes with that pitch of the car. When that nose gets on, on the ground, it gives you a lot of, of aerodynamics, but when you've got that nose up under the back of somebody it takes their downforce away. Yeah, that's what Hornaday's trying to do right now to Scott Wimmer is wear his rear bumper. I'll make him loose so he can get around him. You see Ron Hornaday make that pass. He makes it look easy. And I know it isn't easy, Rusty, but uh, you, you talk about guy, drivers who are great drafters on super speedways. What makes a driver like a Ron Hornaday so good on the flat track? Because the flat racetracks notoriously Jerry, are known as being short racetracks. These guys cut their teeth on the short tracks. They know how to muscle around there, rough these cats up a little bit and get around them. Also, he just run the truck race a little while ago. He knows what this racetrack's doing and what to tell his crew chief to fix it on the next stop. And also, Ron is, is if we added Brad Coleman and Stephen Light together, they'd still be younger than Ron is today, right? <laughs> He's going to kick me in the butt for that. <laughs> Here's the 18 car, Kyle Busch, and now he's being shown in the 12th position. So again, Carl Edwards and Kyle Busch making the move. Edwards is up 18 spots, Kyle Busch up 17 spots from where they started at the back of the pack. As we move in on 50 laps, it is Brad Coleman, the kid from Texas, showing the way here at Milwaukee. At the race for the lead and for second place as we come back to the northerntools.com 250 at the Milwaukee Mile. 53 laps are complete. The leaders, Brad Coleman, the yellow 20 car. Second place, just taken over by Ricky Stenhouse in the city machine. Got around Stephen Light in the holiday in car as Light was trying to find a way around Brad Coleman <laughs> in all the lap traffic. <laughs> Say that again fast. And here comes Brad Keselowski as well as that kid who's really good, Kyle Bush, is marching his way to the front as he moves into 11th position. Carl Edwards got into the top 10 at lap 40. This is Kyle, who hasn't quite kept the pace Carl has himself getting into the top 10, passing our pole sitter Eric Darnell there for the number 10 spot. So back up front uh, to the leader, our holiday and race summary. Uh, no cautions so far in the race. Leaders have been Eric Darnell started on the pole. Brad Coleman's led the most laps. And uh, Stephen Light actually did lead one lap in that dice in traffic. I think we're going to have another leader to add to that to stack here in just a second. It's like Ricky Stenhouse has got a strong race car as well as Stephen Light. Who we talked about earlier in the pre-race show, he and Brad Coleman have a tremendous amount of pressure placed upon their shoulders when they get into these two race cars simply because of the, the guys they share the cars with and you see a uh, lead change here Ricky Stenhouse is marching his way on out towards the front of this pack the young pride of Olive Branch Mississippi oh, where racing man, is there you concerned. Go. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. out in front now becoming the fourth driver to lead this race so it's Stenhouse Jr. Coleman Light Keselowski and then Ron Hornaday in fifth there's Keselowski in the green yep. car going by we fall back to right there, fifth place. Ron Hornaday to start our nationwide up to speed, our nationwide insurance up to speed. Let me get it right, Jamie, before I send it to you. Well, Alan, you know, you're talking about the battle up front and all the young guns. They better beware. The 33 of Ron Hornaday turned 51 years old today. He is on the move. Today, their strategy was set the car up as free as they can on both ends because 
because the track is tightening up. Hey, that's working out. He started 13th. He's up eight positions. Dave? Jamie Scott Wimmer is only up one position, and he's been very, very quiet on the radio. Other cars have fallen off, and so he hasn't had much to say at the very start of the run. His car was very loose, but then he went quiet as his car came to him while others fell backward. Jamie? And Jason Leffler behind him started eighth. He moved up to sixth. Now he's slipping back just a little bit. He was the car everyone was watching after first practice. He was P1. They said they were comfortable, and the car was close. But guys, the race has started, and the car is tight, and it's only getting worse. Behind him, look who's made it up all the way to eighth from the back. Carl Edwards, despite his car not being set up the way he wants it right now, says he has no grip at all. He is on the move. Remember, he won this race last year from the 33rd position. And when they come in, they're looking for a track bar adjustment and air pressure. They're going to hit around lap 80. Behind him, Kyle Busch, the other today flew all the way here ninth right now he too isn't thrilled with the car remember this is like practice for them these first few laps get the car the way they want and kyle bush said he just feels slow shannon jamie mike bliss right behind him in that one car just lost that ninth place position to kyle bush mike bliss started this race 16th it only took him 10 laps to get into the top 10. now bliss won a truck race here in 1998 but he calls this racetrack a difficult challenge the challenge he's faced Condition still battling it right now. Alan? Starting to see those brake rotors glow on some of these yeah. cars, like that number one car right there. So all good for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. He's your race leader. One update while we were going with our nationwide insurance up to speed. Third position changed hands. Yeah, Brad Keselowski slid on up into third. Steven Light still running second. And I tell you, I'm very impressed with how well these guys have driven these first 60 laps. Caution free. Everyone's racing well. So first, second, lap car, third, and fourth. That's the way they run. It's 60 of 250 laps. Still caution free. Expecting some pit stops in a bit. I'll bet we see caution flag before too long. Nope. If you just joined our coverage, the day began with the guys from Sonoma at the back of the pack. Carl and Kyle starting in 41st and 42nd, weaving their way through traffic. It looked like uh, Kyle was headed to Chicago. Look at Carl. He finds himself in the top 15 after just 18 laps. He is sailing on the bottom of the racetrack. Kyle Busch goes underneath Kenny Wallace to get in the top 15 as well. And, of course, at lap 40, Carl Edwards is in the top 10. Both these guys are in the top 10 now, and this is the guy they're chasing. How about 21-year-old Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and Ray Everham? He is making just his fourth ever start in a NASCAR Nationwide car. Yeah, he is. But, you know, these open-wheel guys are coming along, and they've got a lot, of, a, a lot of speed. They're used to quick reaction. But I am so impressed that this kid, he's turning unbelie unbelievably fast laps, but he's in a heavy car. He doesn't seem to be wearing his brakes out. He's taking care of his tires. I tell you what, though, the other guy though, on the other end of the spectrum in a different Roush car, Eric Darnell, is really struggling right now, guys. The car looks like it's loose, tight. It's doing something. It's definitely not hooked up. I would say it's probably getting a little bit tight right now, but, boy, he's fell from the pole all the way back to 14th. Dave, what are they saying down there about Eric? Rusty, if Eric heard you say that, he'd say a little tight. He said it was about a 10 tight a few laps ago. So I went down to crew chief Mike Kelly and I said, was that on the entry that he was complaining about or on throttle that he was complaining about? You know the answer, both really, really tight. Yeah, I tell you what, there's a lesson right there. A car that was that fast in qualifying and Ray this afternoon, it was hot and slick. You know, these cars all get loose with these impound rules that were under here. And evidently, that tie of cars what got him up in the pole there. Yeah, just like we talked, the track was probably so loose when they qualified, having a car that was extra tight allowed him to go really fast, where some of the other faster cars couldn't qualify as good because they were just a little bit too loose to put the throttle down. He will lose another position. This is the 11 car. Scott Legacy Jr. going by, and uh, Darnell, who just joined our coverage, was the pole setter, the eighth first-time pole winner here at Milwaukee. He led the first 20 laps, and the car started skating. He wouldn't turn, and he's been backpedaling now, losing another spot. We see Justin Allgaier there in a backup car all the way uh, from the back of the field on up to 17. Yeah, he's done a pretty good job, but uh, he's struggling, too. He's got to get a pit stop here to get this car worked on. We're hearing green flag pit stops are going to happen around lap 80. We'll see what happens. And remember, uh, the first pit stop could happen earlier. Here we go. A couple of championship contenders. And now for the first time today, the 18 of Kyle Busch able to make the pass on Carl Edwards. And that's for seventh spot. 
Those two have been staying hooked up for about 25 laps right now. Carl kind of cut the hole, kind of made the hole for Kyle to get through. And it looks like Kyle's car, as it's getting darker here at Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and getting cooler, his car looks like it's getting better. Well, either that or maybe those guys really were being patient when we thought that they weren't. But boy, if they've got that much more left uh, to bring those cars up through, it's going to be a heck of a race. Nice run here for the 28 car. Kenny Wallace, who uh, was really aggressive in qualifying. He was pumped up today when he went out to qualify. Uh, he loves this racetrack, Ray. You talked to him earlier. He's up to 11th right now. Got to be loving his run right now. He really is. He was very, very happy with the way his car was in race trim. And I talked to Ken. Kenny's having a great, he's having a great uh, time. He, he's doing a lot of dirt racing, and I think that might be helping him slide around a little bit. Here's Jason Keller in the pits. Dave. He had had a really good run, Doc. Was all the way up to 17th, but just recently he said the car was really, really tight and starting to bounce. So then make a wedge and air pressure adjustment for Jason Keller, one of the first cars to hit pit road. Keller, the winner. Keller won here back in 2003. Here's our pole sitter who mercifully is going to get on pit road and get some adjustments there. Eric Darnell coming down at 35 miles an hour. Headed to you, Dave. And this car that was so tight for Eric Darnell, they've got wrenches in their hands. No doubt, crew chief Mike Kelly has made an air pressure adjustment in those tires already. Big swing was the word he used. So the wedge wrench goes in. Sunoco fuel being added to our pole sitter. Just a little bit of a change there in the wedge. So it must be big on air pressure, small on chassis for Darnell. Darnell, crew moving quickly, left side tires are on. Is it full of fuel? Catch Game Man says yes, and Darnell is off pit road. Hey, look, guys, this is awful early for some of these guys. I mean, I'm thinking maybe six, eight laps later, but boy, they must have been really falling off the tires and needed to get in and get those things hooked up again. But they're probably on the early side of a window to do it in a two-stop race, but kind of a small adjustment in the rear window of that car for as bad as it's been running. Huh, Rusty? Yeah, I would have made a big sweep. But you know what they could have done is made some big air pressure Might changes have. that we, we can't see from up here. Here's Bobby Hamilton Jr. in, in the car. He's had two top 15 finishes in the last three races he's driven from McDonald Motorsports. Being very deliberate to get in. Bernie Lamar is in. Shannon. Bernie Lamar right there in the number 32 car, guys. He's been saying, as everybody else, his car is tight and plowing. You see that wrench in the back? That is a chassis adjustment. Four tires and fuel for the 32. Dave. Very tight race car for Brendan Gone. They thought about being one of the first cars to pit, doing that short pit thing, but now they're about sixth in line. A big track bar adjustment for Brendan. That will move the track bar up. That will help that car turn a little bit better. A four tire stop for Gone as well. Fresh rubber full of fuel, and he'll be on his way off pit road. I like what they did in a 62, the track bar. I counted, they raised that track bar three quarters of an inch. One round is a quarter of an inch. That's a, a big adjustment. But he, I like what Shane Huffman did. Made a big jump at it. Got to do something right now, so just play with it. And that should help that car quite a bit in the middle and exit of the corner, Rusty. The only bad thing, it could make him a little bit free getting in, but they might have made a tire pressure change to compensate for that. Well, one thing he's got coming that could help that, Ray, as you well know, it's going to get a lot cooler here. These tracks are going to get hooked, more hooked up. And I'll tell you 47 of McDowell in. Let's go down to, to his pitch. Shannon. Michael McDowell tight in the middle, loose in, loose off. They're going to take a pretty big whack at it. They're going to go two rounds down on that track bar for that 47. They're going to take four tires and fuel for Michael McDowell. Rookie of the year contender there, guys. Hornaday is in right in front of McDowell. Jamie. Ron Hornaday has not said a word over the radio. He's completely happy with the car. One of the very few out here. The car is actually getting better. Remember, this is the first oval race in a nationwide car in two years. He's doing well. Dave Owen, oh, he stalls it. Dave. Scott Wimmer is on pit road. Brad Coleman is on pit road. Wimmer's car just uh, pretty good right now. He's going to take a little bit of air pressure out of the right front of that car. Shannon. Dave Stephen Light in that 29 car. He says the back end has no grip at all. He's tight in the center as well. They're just going to make an air pressure adjustment. They don't want to go too far on the adjustment. Four tires for that 29 car. Guys, he's down and away. Still waiting for Stenhouse to come on pit road. Brad Keselowski as well. And, and Doc, if I'm the crew chief, I'm going to be talking to that kid. He doesn't have a lot of experience. Important pit stop. And we are told, there comes the leader. We are told that the Hornaday was too fast on exit. Stenhouse now trying to get it wowed down all the way to 35 miles an hour. Good advice, Ray. Well, I tell you, Ron Hornaday didn't need that up. 
a penalty exiting pit road. Some of the same stuff we saw last week at Kentucky already rearing his head. And, and Hornaday is coming back down pit road to serve that penalty. Stephen Wallace in to get his four tires here on lap 81. And here's the leader in, Dave. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is in right now in that 16 car. A little tight in the center of three and four will net just a small air pressure adjustment for this young driver. He did the hard part, got on this very tricky pit road, made himself, and now he stalls it. It's tough for a kid to get on pit road. Now tougher to get off. He's done a good job. Jamie. And Trevor Bain in his pit box making his third start for Michael Waltrip Racing. I talked to his crew chief, Jerry Bain. Before the race, he said this one has been a beast since they unloaded, made a ton of adjustments. You see them? They had the tire, almost got away, but he's down and away, Dave. Air pressure adjustment for Brad Keselowski in that 88 car. A little bit loose up off of the corner. They've made a four tire stain. Change a good clean pit stop for the 88 crew. Keselowski's gone. The one car and the 12 car, both too fast on exit. That is Bliss and Allgaier. And here comes the 60 car. Carl Edwards had stayed out to try to lead a lap and get those five bonus points. He will now come down on lap 82 to make his first stop of the day. Coming from the back of the pack, all the way to the front, and now headed toward you, Jamie. Well, it's been quite a run so far, but Carl just wasn't happy with it. Just said they didn't have any grip, and he didn't understand why it felt like when he got on the brakes that the nose was still up. I think it's just that adjustment going from the cup car. Four tires are making a track bar adjustment, and air pressure adjustment to try to get some grip in the 60. Just under 16 seconds, and now with the cycling of pit stops, Ricky Stenhouse. One's going straight out. Dude. Take a look at this, guys. There's a yellow line right there. That's what they got to race to. We've already got three cars that got busted. The one car of Mike Bliss, the 12 car of Al Geyer, and the 33 of Hornaday. This is a shot of what happened last week. These guys have got to be careful and not get past that yellow line too fast. And Rusty, just like last week, that is the shortest segment on pit road, so less margin for error. Well, Ray, you told us about it in the countdown show. I don't think these guys listen too good, though. We are working lap 84 of the NASCAR Nationwide Series at Milwaukee, presented by Toyo Tires. And after a cycling through of the first scheduled pit stops, it is the young man from Mississippi, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., only his fourth career star, but he is our leader. Lots of motorsports programming yet to come your way throughout the weekend. Again, it is uh, NASCAR now, the new time, 11 a.m. Eastern time tomorrow, presented by Five Hour Energy, the pre-race edition, setting the stage for what's going to happen in Sonoma. Also recapping what happened here. And in Monday, 5 Eastern time, the round table, ESPN2, Alan Bestwick, Ray Everham will be up there, Ricky Craven and Mike Wallace. And uh, how about some great IndyCar racing and a track designed by Rusty Wallace out in Newton, Iowa, the Iowa Corn Indy 250 on ABC tomorrow at 1 o'clock Eastern time. And we invite you to join us on ABC next Saturday uh, from the Magic Mile up in New Hampshire, 2.30 Eastern time for NASCAR nationwide action. Michael McDowell trying not to go a lap down. That is the leader there, Stenhouse, trying to go around him. McDowell being shown in 18th position. The 60 got by the one car a moment ago, but uh, boy, one of the things you got to have here, Rusty, is brakes. Yeah, take a look at the glowing rotors on the front of this one car. I've been watching a lot of cars, and his rotors are really red. And Ray, what does that do to the air pressure of the tires that cause these cars to handle great? Can that affect it? Well, it, it, the brake heat definitely goes through. The, it's a, we run a steel wheel on the car, so it transfers to the tire and builds up the air pressure. But with these nationwide cars, since they've taken the horsepower away, guys are sneaking smaller and smaller brake packages on them. And you've got to be careful you don't go too small, because too small a rotor will glow like that, and eventually it'll crack. I'm noticing a lot of guys out there in practice this afternoon really had their grills taped off more, trying to minimize the amount of air flowing through the brakes. I think that's a wise move or not. Well, again, that helps your front downforce, so you get your car to turn. And, but, you know, you, you've got to keep everything cool. It's a balance. Shannon, you got something for us? Well, I can tell you right now, Mike Bliss has been battling the tight conditions all day long in practice and then in the race today. They did two rounds on the track bar to try to alleviate that, but that one car, they've been struggling. Tell you what, the brakes are going to be an issue before the night's over for some of these guys. Because like Ray said, it really builds the front air pressure on these cars, makes them handle bad. 
and they really need to work on it to, to calm that down. Battle for third position here, Stephen Light, the 29 car, and the 18 of Kyle Busch, and Kyle able to make the pass, and Ray, you made a, as you watch this battle, you made a good point. Kyle, the big winner on that exchange of pit stops a moment ago. Yeah, he sure did. He had a good pit stop, no doubt, but he pitted one or two laps early, which gave him fresher tires, but Rusty, you know, as a driver, you can, it's not just about the pit stop, it's about how fast you get the pit road. Oh, yeah, I mean, you gotta be really efficient. We talked about not getting busted coming down pit road, but you don't want to give much up either. I mean, you gotta be absolutely perfect nowadays in racing if you're going to win these races. you got to get in good. you got to go through the center of the pit road good, and you got to exit good. And you got to take all that five-mile-an-hour advantage they give you on pit road to get that job done. Finally, Kyle Busch able to drive it down on the bottom, but Shelby Howard, the lap car in front of him, now slides up in front of Stephen Light. That's just a break that Kyle Busch needed. And Stephen Light's had a, a good car, a very fast car all, all night. You know, again, we're about to see how fast that 16 car really is because Brad Keselowski in that 88 car has been strong all night. Now he, he's gaining on just a little bit. Well, you see what's happening right now. Look at the sky. It's starting to get darker. The lights are coming on. This racetrack is changing big time. The whole complexity is going to change right now. Up front, Ricky Stenhouse in the 16 car has now led twice for 38 laps. The 88 car behind him, the car that led the most laps a year ago, Brad Keselowski, inching in slower and slower. Keselowski has been shown as leading just two laps. So it is Stenhouse Jr., Keselowski, Kyle Busch, Light, and Wimmer in the top five. We move in on 100 laps. Look how good that 16 car has been. Ricky Stenhouse, the leader. Back with more of the Nationwide Series presented by Toyo Tires at Milwaukee. Coverage of Major League Baseball continues on ESPN and ESPN2 with two nights of action. First at 8 Eastern, it's Sunday Night Baseball presented by Taco Bell on ESPN as the National League West leading Dodgers take on the Angels. Then catch Monday Night Baseball on ESPN2 at 7 Eastern as the Cardinals face the Mets. ESPN News will be shown in both St. Louis and the New York markets. Both games are part of the ALNL Showdown presented by State Farm on ESPN, ESPN2, and ESPN3. 360. See, that was Miller Park there in the background, the home of the Milwaukee Brewers, and we are at the Milwaukee Mile here. And the 16 car, what a phenomenal effort by Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Clear by four, good corner. Be careful of these lap cars. Keep your fenders on it. They're going to run you hard. They're good cars. Warning to be very careful, and boy, you know, he's so excited and got a good car, but right, that's something you got to keep telling a young driver. Yeah, you've got to stay in your ear. He is, you know, uh, getting by uh, the, the 33 car there was, was big. I don't know if, if Hornaday is having a problem, but, there, you know, he's got Keselowski behind him now. He's going to have to be careful. He's got a real good car. He doesn't want to get uh, excited right now. Keselowski dies beneath him and takes a spot away, a clean pass entering turn one. And I'll tell you, that was a good pass right there, but that pass going into turn three where Trevor Bain just all rooted up Hornaday up in the the top lane got him up in the dirt. All those guys got lapped because of that. And Brad Keselowski gets around him when all that traffic happens because of that mess. But what a great job Ricky's doing. But there's old Brad leading this thing. We knew he'd be up to the front. We talked about what a special week this is for so many drivers. It is Father's Day tomorrow, and Ricky Stenhouse came here hoping to be able to give his dad a special memory. Let's go down to their pit. Stay. And, Doc, I'm with his dad right now, Rick Stenhouse Sr. Rick, what do you think about his run so far, especially holding the lead through that round of green flag pit stops? So far, he's done a real good job. I think he's being really patient, and that's going to be the name of the game here. Uh, the city financial forms are good, and uh, this is for Eddie, and uh, hopefully we'll have a good Father's Day, and he'll bring it home to victory lane. Did I hear that uh, you tried to teach him patience at home growing up as well? Yeah, it's been tough, too. Uh, he's always wanted to be on the gas and lead every lap he can. And you just got to have patience and hopefully you'll learn some and uh, carry this thing on in. Young race car drivers who want to lead every lap. I can't imagine that, Rusty. Can you? Well, hey, fathers love their kids, and he's rooting that boy right to the front. And I got to tell you, I really think Ricky's car right now is a little bit faster than Brad's car. He just got stuck back in that traffic. 
What they've got to keep telling him right now, though, now, now he's back there a little bit, so he doesn't have as much clean air to his nose. He's got to be patient, not overheat that right front, and know that he's got a good car. Let that front cool off and get a, back, a run back to the 88. I believe that he is a little bit quicker, roughly like Steve, but as long as he doesn't overheat that tire, getting too excited. You know, this is the reason that Ray Abraham was so successful. Getting out of his driver what he needed to get out of him and calm him down when he needs to calm him down. Hey, you just taught me something right there, man. I was never that calm. <laughs> Maybe that's the reason I didn't win as much as you. <laughs> Rick Stenhouse Sr. watching his young son possibly chase a dream. And how about the, the rich tradition of the Keselowski family from the Irish Hills of Michigan? And, of course, in Brad Keselowski, we asked him about how important this weekend is for him, particularly Father's Day. Well, my dad got my career started. I can still remember the first time uh, I went to a racetrack. It was to watch my dad. So uh, he's meant a lot to my racing career and my life in general as far as uh, you know the code in which you, you live your life and and you uh, you race your competitors or you interact with your race team you know, i've got all that from my dad his dad bob keselowski is a racer's racer former arca series champion still working in the sport with his older brother brian keselowski brad talking about what it meant to be a part of that family and of course already what a successful year for this young man a win in the nascar nationwide series on the one mile at dover and also a win and only his seventh start as a nascar sprint cup driver at talladega he is leading here at lap 109 at the milwaukee mile Brad Keselowski leads tonight's NASCAR Nationwide Series race at the Milwaukee Mile. Our coverage presented by Toyo Tires from the Pit Studio. Best we can, Brad, watching the guy that won the last race on a mile track try to do it again. He is absolutely putting on a show, and he's having a little bit of trouble right now with Scott Legacy. Scott's not giving him a lot of room. Scott's only one lap down, doesn't want to go another lap down so he can get that lucky dog, and uh, he's running Brad as hard as he possibly can with Brad Keselowski's move. A uh, little right. note. Sorry about that. A little okay. note. We're caution-free so uh, far. The longest stretch to start a race since the Homestead race in 2001 was 111 laps. We're now at 114. You guys are doing an excellent job, but I'll tell you what, Alan, that old 18 car is lurking, and he is on his way in a hurry. He's starting to creep in on the top two. Let's do our nationwide insurance up to speed here, update you on the front runners. David, you've got the leader. And after today's first practice, I asked Brad Keselowski, is this this track because it's unique, it's so flat, does it make it harder, make you think harder about what to do with it? He said, yeah, these cars aren't made to do this. This track is a pain in the butt, but I guess it's a pain in the butt in an okay way because he's figured out how to make it fast here today. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. told me his biggest challenge here racing this track for the very first time were the long corners, where to pick up the throttle. At first, he was picking it up too late, and then he was picking it up too early. The fact that he's led as many laps here tonight as he has proves he knows right where to pick up the throttle. Jamie? And Dave Kyle Busch sure is lurking, as Rusty said. After that last pit stop, you know they made a track bar adjustment, and for scuffed tires, he said it's getting better, and you don't hear that from Kyle a lot, so I keep your eye on this 18, perhaps uh, working his way up to the front before this thing's over. Dave? Scott Wimmer has picked up a position since that round of pit stops. They made an adjustment on that race car, you remember. It was a wedge adjustment for the five. Since that time, Scott has been very quiet on the radio. The one thing he's told his crew, the car is better than it was on the last run. Shannon? Dave, Stephen Wallace running six, the same place where he started this race. He's been struggling with the conditioning of this car. He says right now it's free in, then he rolls the center, then it's tight off. Now, this is the same car that Stephen, Wall Stephen Light had in Nashville, both Nashville races, where he finished sixth and 11th. He said that fact right there, knowing that he's been in this car, is a huge comfort for him. Dave? Now, Brad Coleman led this race earlier, and they made a pretty big adjustment on that car, track bar and air pressure adjustment the last time. When the right front tire came off that car, the crew noted that it was pretty much junk. He'd really used it up on that last run. So they're hoping that during this run, that doesn't present itself to be a problem. Jamie? And behind him, Carl Edwards in the 60 car. He hasn't made a lot of improvements since the last pit stop, but he does say his car as he sits eighth. And behind him, Stephen Wallace. Car's been pretty good tonight. They only came in, they made an air pressure adjustment and four tires on the lap, last pit stop. As you see, a battle on and off with Jason Loeffler in the 33. Alan? 
Yeah, Jason left with just a little contact there going through uh, the corner and uh, wrinkled up that right rear of that 38 car. Check it out. Up there. See what happens here. They come in off the corner. See 38 car diving deep down there trying to get get underneath uh, Howard and just a little bit loose. It's you know it's flat and slick and bam boy that's not good. That's really going to hurt him aerodynamically obviously and uh, it's hard to get down force at this racetrack as we heard already Everham talking about thought he could just slide a little four wheel drift trying to get up above Howard and uh, that's going to hurt his even. He may be in uh, a lot of trouble. Caught the back of uh, the front of his right rear with the back of Shelby Howard's left front. Yeah. A little can opener effect there. Oh, that's on not that good. But still caution free. <laughs> Kyle Busch at one of only a couple of tracks in big league NASCAR racing that he's not ever scored a top 10 finish on. He's come from the back. He's running third. Ricky Stenhouse running second after leading for a while. But it's Brad Keselowski who's out front. Yeah. No Toyo. Lap 124 under caution at the Milwaukee Mile for the first time tonight. Contact a 99 car sliding up across the racetrack. Also some smoke and possibly oil out of the back of the 28 of Kenny Wallace. Leaders, Brad Keselowski, Stenhouse, Bush and Wimmer all headed down pit road. Single file for their first stop under the caution. Let's go down to Shannon. Doc Steven Light in that number 29 car says it's free in and tight off. You see him on the top of the screen right now. They're going to make a wedge adjustment in the right rear, four tires and fuel for the 29. Jamie. And Kyle Busch in the 18, he's in. He's going to take four sticker tires this time. See if that works. Have frown up wedge and air pressure adjustment for the 18. Dave. The leader wants more of the same to help his car turn a little bit more. That more is a little bit more air into the right rear tire. Little trouble on the rear tire. On the left side, he will lose a spot on pit road. Couple spots. Indeed, a couple of spots. Kyle Busch up a couple. Whoa, the 20 car just getting around the outside tire of Eric Darnell. You see uh, Stephen light up a spot. Wimmer back one. Again, the reason for the caution flag was the 99 car right there. Trevor Bain getting up to have some contact with the wall. That allowed NASCAR to put out the yellow flag here for the first time tonight. We go fight. We go smash. That's it. NASCAR racing coming away tonight from the Brew City here, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, known for all the great breweries in town, of course, and their heavy, heavy involvement for many, many years in sponsoring NASCAR race cars. Our ESPN coverage of the NASCAR Nationwide Series tonight from here in Milwaukee and also the home of Laverne and Shirley and Squiggy and Lenny and all the bunch from that uh, that great show. Here's our lucky dog, by the way, the Aaron's Lucky Dog free pass winner, Kenny Wallace. Uh, he will be able, he was the first car lap down and will get the free pass to get back on the lead lap. Let's update to 28, Shannon. Very disappointing, Kenny Wallace was running in the top 12. He had an oil line loose on the right side, so they brought him down pit road. They went under the hood. They believe that they've gotten it tightened up on that 28 car. But guys, it's very disappointing because Kenny Wallace was really looking forward to this track. He's had two engine problems in the last two weeks and was looking for a good run here tonight. He was running up in 11th position prior to start slowing down and having some issues. Now, Kyle Busch, for the first time tonight, is being shown as a leader. Now, he will get the five bonus points. He is being shown as having led two laps. And while the pace vehicle will pull away, we'll listen to the spotters as we go full throttle. He just got into turn three real right, hard on this restart. Got up in the marbles and slid that baby right up into the wall. Let's take a look at this. Really sailing in the corner. Just never could get the car to turn. Got way too high. Got the rubber built up, the marbles we call it, on his tires and couldn't steer it. He was in 10th position when he got to the outside there. Watch again. Just couldn't quite get it to slow down. It just went up across the racetrack. 
Looked like he got loose getting in there, Rusty, and, and just couldn't turn the wheel to the left. Well, the tire pressures are down. That could happen. Dave, what's it look like down there? Guys, I think it's the right front tire. The odd thing about it is that during his pit stop, he had some damage to the left front fender. Definitely, uh, and they thought was going to be the problem. Uh, he's got some marks on the right rear tire. I don't know. These tires are looking up pretty good right now, guys. We'll get back to you with further update. Well, it looks like Coleman's lost the lap. Now, look at all the rubber built up on this tire we're looking at. Folks, all that rubber built up is what causes all these problems to do that. Take a look at that right there. It's a lot of rubber built up around the tire, and that will make that car not stick at all. The right portion of that tire is pretty clean, but, Ray, look at the inside. That causes a problem. Brad Coleman will lose one lap on pit road now come out being shown in 24th position. Here's the 18 car, Kyle Busch. And you tell Doc he's leading, but you can go back to that green flag pit stop, but put him in position to get up from getting that track position. He's up there and he sets down. Here's a great battle. Fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh on back there is Stephen Light, the 29 car, left side of your screen. Trying to hold off the five of Wimmer. Edwards back there with him. Stephen Wallace having a good run. There's Carl Levers in the 60 car trying to go beneath Wimmer for fifth spot. Well, the speeds are really picking up right now. This last time by was the fastest speeds we've seen all night long. And we talked earlier about the track cooling down and the chassis is changing. Well, it's doing that right now. And the cars are definitely handling better and running faster right now. And Rusty, we're seeing some good side-by-side -side racing. You're seeing several different approaches to the corner and guys are moving up the, as many as one lane. We're seeing guys right on the yellow line and guys up a lane. I okay, just love this old racetrack. It's flat, it's fast, it's fun. It's a real, career, it's a real uh, character builder, that's for sure. If you, if you get a car handling good here, uh, you've really done your work. And you know what, another thing, guys, we got a stretch coming up. Next week at Loudoun, New Hampshire, a lot of people come here to Milwaukee to test for Loudoun. So this is really going to be a good test tonight to see how good those guys can run next week, Jerry. Many of these guys you're seeing here are planned on taking the exact same car, loading it up and then going to New Hampshire. They wanted to make sure this car was kept in one piece. Right now, Carl Everett is worried about getting a car, a one car into victory lane for the year. And he's now making a move inside of the five car Wimmer. And he will take that fifth spot away. So it is Kyle Busch, they leading the race, Brad Keselowski, Ricky Stenhouse, Stephen Light, and Carl Edwards in the top five. Lap 135 of the NASCAR Nationwide Series at Milwaukee, presented by Toyo Tires. NASCAR Nationwide Series at the Milwaukee Mile, presented by Toyo Tires. Toyo Tires is driven to perform and in part by Prescription Flomax and Dickies, wear with purpose. Great battles around the racetrack here at the Milwaukee Mile. It is Kyle Busch leading. Look at this battle here. The 60 of Edwards and the 29 of Stephen Light. That is for four spot and Edwards will get it. Well, Concrete Carl's doing pretty good in his asphalt track tonight. Took that baby from the back to the front. And it looks like it's been handling good all night long. It looks like he's adjusting to the uh, darkness out here in Milwaukee, the cooler temperatures. On the other hand, you see the 20 there, Doc, a little problem there. Yeah, he was running in 10th position on lap 128 when the car slid up and uh, bounced off the wall. Dave, what was the problem when he came down pit road and put the tires off? Well, I mean, he was having a great run up until that round of pit stops. Two things happened. One was he hit a tire on pit road. That wasn't his fault. The left front fender was damaged, and the crew brought him back down pit road a second time to repair the damage on the left front. That put him back in a mess of cars he hadn't been racing with all night. He got out of the groove, and crew chief Dave Ryder confirmed after they came down and changed two tires but the tires were up you just got up there in the marbles you guys called it exactly right that's a tough situation you know again he's been doing a great job just a young guy but that's one the crew chief has got a you know a, a guy like Dave Rogers is, is used to working with guys that have such experience you know sometimes you just got to remind a guy look we got a 125 laps left here you'll be calm you got a real good car and, uh, just got caught out. Well, you know, it's been a while since these guys are running the racetrack like this. They create so much marbles like you see in the left-hand side of your screen there. And if he got in a little hot like he did, got up in that stuff, man, it just gets on the tires, and that car won't turn for a couple laps until you get it off of there. Ninth place battle here. There's a six car of Eric Darnell, who was our pole sitter, and behind him, the 40 car of Eric Almirola, who won here two years ago. Remember the uh, saga of Almirola, who sat on the pole and uh, led 
much of the first 50 laps. Get out of the car. Denny Hamlin got in because he was late getting here from Sonoma. Hamlin went on the drove at the victory lane, but Almarola really got credit for the victory. Doc, you're exactly right. That did happen. This guy's really good. He's a good driver. He started out the year a little bit driving some for Teresa Earnhardt and Chip Ganassi in their cup program and just had a little problem with the money. Keep him going, but we know he's a good driver. Battles all around the track. This is a very important battle right here, Ray. Really important. That's the battle for the lucky dog. So if a caution comes out, one of those guys is going to get their lap back. And I'm going to tell you, that is going to be a battle because uh, between Mike Bliss and Ron Hornaday, neither one of them is going to want to well, give that up. I don't think I'd want to be the guy on the outside with the guy on the inside maybe slide up in me and take me out because that can happen at this racetrack. If these two guys here, they're hard drivers, man. Hornaday and Bliss. We'll just have to watch what's going to happen here, especially in the turn one and turn three. Jamie? I believe, Rusty, we call these two guys veteran drivers, old school. Ron Hornaday, so old school, barely talks on the radio at all. But earlier, after he got that pit road penalty, he went back a little bit. They thought there was a problem with the car as he goes to the inside of Bliss. Thought there was a problem with the car, the tire. He didn't say anything. Right now, the car seems to be fine, but he's lingering around that 12th position. Hasn't made a whole lot of ground up, but he's hanging on in the 33. Thanks, Jamie. The 28 car has been black flagged to come on pit road because it was billowing smoke, and now they have put the raise the hood to take a look. That's a real shame for Kenny. He had a great car. Uh, he was running really well, one of the last cars on the lead lap, but obviously they've got some, uh, it looked like it was getting worse and worse, so if that's an oil line, it looked like it might have a hole in it rather than being loose. I'll tell you, he's been driving the wheels off this car. It's doing a fantastic job for the U.S. Border Patrol, and doggone, they have another mechanical problem right there. He's got to be wanting to pull his hair out right now. Now, guys, on the left side of your screen, this battle for 11th, not only these guys trying to get the lucky dog to get back on the lead lap, they both have good race cars, and uh, with a little bit of luck, these guys have a chance of getting back on the lead lap. One of them could win this race. And they keep changing position. One inside, <laughs> outside, they're doing a crossover. That's a good race. You know, just a few minutes ago, 33 was on the inside, and the one was on the inside. Now, 33 is coming back to the Take inside. Take a look at this down the back straightaway. The race is right here. I mean, for the lucky dog, position and man you get look at those front brake rotors on fire in both of those cars they're driving the wheels off them the guy on the inside's got to be careful that he doesn't spin out into that guy on the outside because that's what happens when you get suckered into this deal. Both these guys are veterans that raced together in the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series years ago. Of course, uh, both of them are former Truck Series champions, and both have won races here in the NASCAR Truck Series. Hornaday's came today, of course, and uh, Bliss won back in 1998. Kyle Busch has never had a top 10 finish and certainly never won a race here, but right now showing the way at lap 150. Kyle Busch currently leading the NASCAR Nationwide Series at Milwaukee, presented by Toyo Tires. We are just 95 laps away from the checkered flag. Kyle Busch, our leader, Brad Keselowski in second spot. And one car now easing up on that second place car is the 60 of Carl Edwards, by far the best run he has had in quite a while. Yeah, he's looking good right now. He's got a good handling car. He's driving patient. You know, he knows he's got it. He had to come from the back to the front. And he's just, uh, I can't say nothing bad about the guy. It's all good right now. No problems. Looks good. And the track's coming to him a little bit. This is where the, you know, the, those cup guys bring that experience. They've had a couple pit stops, got the adjustments that he's want. And we need to throw a shout out to uh, Colin Brown for setting that car up in, in practice, too. Carl Edwards will take that spot away and move in now. He's going to set his sights on Kyle Busch. Now, the fastest car on the racetrack is the 66 car and that is Stephen Wallace. He is almost two tenths of a second faster than Kyle Busch. By far the best run we've ever seen Stephen have here at Milwaukee and a lot of that may be due to a major change. You got a new crew chief there this week. A guy you know. Uh, uh, a guy I know well. Graham Haskins Bruce. There he is or trip as we call him. Great guy. Veteran crew chief knows the car. He's a real racer. I think he's going to be really good for Stephen. He's got a couple of wins here with Johnny Benson. He, he won a championship in the truck with Johnny Benson. And, uh, and Tripp has been around a long time. He's going to be really good for Steven. Jamie, you got more? And so far, it has been a great night. You know, it's not always easy for a driver to swap crew chiefs in the middle of the season. But Tripp came in and he said, hey, I'm not looking to change everything right now. I just want to establish routine. And he's very calm. If you listen to him on the radio talking to Steven, calling him Bud, just telling him to focus, think ahead. It's working. Steven started 28th. All they've made is air pressure adjustments tonight. Right now, he's 6th, 7th, guys, doing a great
great job. The guy who was the crew chief there, Jamie, Dale Ferguson, has been now promoted to chief engineer for the entire operation. He really was an engineer, but he was serving in the role as crew chief. I, tell you, he, I think it was a good move. We sat down and talked, and I really put a lot of pressure on Dale to kind of handle this whole organization. And his, his best suit is to be the chief engineer. And right now, him and Tripp get along great. I had no idea they worked together in the past, but boy, do they get along fine, so it's showing right now. Remember, last year, a crew chief change for Carl Edwards allowed him to get his first win of the season right here at Milwaukee. So maybe a crew chief change for Stephen Wallace. Maybe the mojo's working, but Stephen is still the fastest car on the racetrack being shown now in seventh position. I wonder why that car's sparking so much. They got that front end nice and low getting into the corners. So I guess that's just one of those special uh, trip Bruce setups, huh? Yeah. When he, when he goes in the corner, he must be just touching that brake a little bit. It seems like Steven is running just a little bit low. When he gets onto that, that black patch of, of pavement there, it just drags a touch. We're talking about different crew chiefs on the pit box here tonight. Another team that has that, that situation going on is the 16 car. Dave? And, Doc, we've mentioned that that's because Eddie Pardue's daughter, Ilana, they call her Lonnie, as at home suffering from non-life-threatening injuries, but injury, uh, uh, condition, but that have kept her in the hospital this week. And Eddie Pardue has spent more time in the hospital that he has at the race shop working with Alana. Alana turns four tomorrow. Matt Fuchsia is taking over Eddie's duties here. He knows Eddie needs to be at home, but Eddie's been on the phone back and forth all day long. And as far as Alana, who I just mentioned, turns four tomorrow, she's young, but the crew to a man has said she's probably up watching this race because she already understands how the cars go around the track, and she wants to watch that 16 car every time it's racing. Well, number one, kudos to Eddie Pardue for understanding his priorities are to be there with his family on Father's Day tomorrow with his four-year-old daughter. And Eddie, your boys are doing a great job, and Ricky Stenhouse doing a heck of a job. He is fourth right now in the car that you had for Matt Kenseth early in the year. Right now, they're all still chasing Kyle Bush. night in Milwaukee. Well, maybe go to one of the local establishments, have some beer, have some brats, uh, do a little chicken dance. Chicken dance? What are them people doing, A.B.? It's chicken dance. Come chicken on, you know, dance. you've been in sports arenas all your life. You've seen it. Have you got an outfit like that? Like That's the guys bad. Look at stuff. Look at they got bugs in their pants oh, jumping around. Stop. Now, I understand the other stuff for medicinal purposes, but I want to know about that dancing they're doing. There's Kyle Bush. He's out in front by two and three-tenths seconds over Carl Edwards. He was out in front by 3.1 seconds over Carl Edwards. We'll keep an eye on that interval. Only a ca uh, one caution in this race so far that's dropped us down to just 10 cars on the lead lap. And the guy that's in 10th is a neat story. First of all, underdog team, Curtis Key Motorsports. Second of all, Eric Almarola, back behind the wheel of a nationwide series car here at Milwaukee. Yeah, Eric's very good here, obviously. And he's a really good young race car driver. We saw him last year participate with the DEI program. He ran some cup races. He's had some success at this level, and it's good to see him back. Like I said, it's a little bit of an underfunded program, but he's giving them a good ride tonight. Remember a couple uh, years ago, Eric qualified the car that Denny Hamlin was to drive, uh, started the race, was leading. Hamlin was delayed, didn't get here for the start of the race when there were some vehicles parked on the spot they were going to land the choppers. So the call was made about 59 laps in for Almirola to bring the car to pit road. Hamlin got aboard, went to the back of the field, came all the way back to the front, won the race in NASCAR. The guy that starts the race gets the points, gets credit for the win, so on. So even though Denny Hamlin took the checkered flag, Eric Almirola was officially credited with his first nationwide series win. He's spoken freely since then that he doesn't really feel like that was him. His win. It was Denny's. He's having a great run for an underdog team tonight. Now that the car Scott Wimmer normally drives. Here's the car Scott's on board tonight. The five car for Dale Jr. and Rick Hendrick. He's locked up in a pretty tight fight here for a position with uh, Stephen Light in the 29 car. This for sixth and seventh. Yeah, Scott's very quick. He's done a good job all night. He's kept that race car very clean. Put himself in position with about 80 laps to go to get himself in a position to move up front. I think Scott's got a good chance to win this race if he can just make a few more position passes. Now Scott was a little farther ahead a couple laps ago and then this happened runs off down in the corner and you see the car just drift completely up he does a great job of not getting into the fence flat racetrack we talked about you're gonna have a little bit of a push from time to time veteran driver does a good job of not getting that thing up in there see him get up in the marbles that's what we saw rusty heard rusty talking about that earlier and you could see the rubber flying around his race tires did a great job dave what can you add to that well 
Brad, that is a result of him calling the car edgy, and it got right on the very far edge right there. And he says for that final pit stop, the car needs overall grip to turn better. And they'll try to give him that on his final pit stop. All right, Dave, thanks. So Scott Wimmer back in sixth position right now. He's fallen about nine seconds behind leader Kyle Busch. Leaders were on pit road at lap 125. We went racing at lap 129. And gentlemen, that means we're going to see some pit stops here in maybe 20 laps or so. That should be the final stop, Alan. And let's just check with our crew chief here. Uh, 80 to 85 laps. Uh, we're looking at right at 200. Yeah, you'll see the those guys come. But again, you know, this race is relatively caution free. So you might see some guys short pit because tires are making a pretty big difference. We've seen over a full second drop off since when they put from new tires to used tires. They might want to explain to people what you mean by short pitting. I would mean that you, you, you want to come for those tires early. You don't really need gas. You're inside your fuel window to finish the race. You put your new tires on early so you can gain on the field. Now, that's a gamble because even though you're you're faster one second faster than the rest of the field if the caution comes out you're lapped down well racing's a gamble so uh, that might pay off let's check in on the 88 team dave he was asked by crew chief tony Uri senior to give a report on his car what he needed for the end of the race he said i'll get back to you and after he ran a couple laps he thought about it and he reported this to his crew we're getting beat by a lot of cars now so we got to do something well i feel like i'm definitely getting beat in the center If I try to pitch it in like Carl and these guys are doing, I feel like I'm going to back it in the wall. I feel like I'm too loose to do that. Counterintuitive. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Counterintuitive. I think the main thing there was just a little bit loose everywhere for this driver. They'll try to give him just a little bit more to help that car not turn quite so good on the final stop. Pretty good feedback, pretty good discussion, Rusty. Uh, crew Chief Pop Sherry, a guy that has a lot of experience on making cars, uh, dialing cars in to get them to victory lane. And, of course, this young man, Brad Keselowski, talking about changing the pitch entering the corner. Well, he knows what his car will do. Do not get suckered into what somebody else is doing and try to run your line if your car won't do it. I've seen many guys try to stay way out high. you got to have a pretty tight race car to do that. He could stay way out high like 60 car was doing Carl Edwards and lose that thing. And he'll screw up his whole night if he tries that. And Tony Urey Sr., yeah, just, just poking him and telling him, hey, look, you know, a lot of cars are beating us now. And he said, think about it. Tell me, what can I do to help you the most? Where are we getting beat? Brad Keselowski has moved to third in the point standing, so he has a lot to lose if they were to have an issue with this race car. They're currently running right now here third on the racetrack. Now, Kyle Busch is our leader, but this car is um, bottoming out, throwing sparks in different parts of the racetrack. A little bit ago, he had sparks coming off the car, something underneath the car. Yeah, it looks like it's dragging something, a little, uh, maybe a fender supporter or a uh, rear end supporter, something. Yeah, well, it's, it's continuing, Ray, so it's not just bottoming out in one spot. Down the straightaways, there's something laying on the ground or laying on the drive shaft or something causing this thing to have continuous sparking. So we'll watch this development program right here. Kyle Busch has a 1.2 second lead over Carl Edwards. Then Brad Keselowski, Ricky Stenhouse, and Stephen Wallace has climbed all the way to the top five pit stops when we come back in about 15 laps. Back in a moment. Coverage of Major League Baseball continues on ESPN and ESPN2 with two nights of action. First at 8 Eastern, it's Sunday Night Baseball presented by Taco Bell on ESPN as the National League West leading Dodgers take on the Angels. Hey, what a beginning for the Dodgers here in 2009. Then catch Monday Night Baseball on ESPN2 at 7 Eastern as the Cardinals face the Mets. ESPN News will be shown in both the St. Louis and New York. Marcus Bunkings, part of the ALNL Showdown presented by State Farm on ESPN, ESPN. ESPN2 and ESPN 360. Sparks continue from beneath the 18 car. A lot of discussion here by our experts. Guys, you get any idea what you think it might be? I think it's something rubbing on the brake rotor causing the sparks. And it's sparks are going to be done by metal to metal mostly, Ray. So I whatever's happened has got to eat itself away pretty soon. Well, it, it did because those sparks were pretty bad before. So it's kind of done a little self clearance. It doesn't seem to have slowed the car down. So, you know, I agree, Rusty. It could have been something uh, in, in that brake duct area. It had to be something rubbing near a wheel for sure because we couldn't see anything dragging. Jamie, what does Jason Ratcliffe of Crew Chief think it is? Thanks I'll it tell is. you, you guys are both right. I just asked Jason Ratcliffe and he said he put some brake duct pieces on the rear 
and he's watching when Kyle gets into the corner, it's barely touching that brake rotor. So right now it's not causing a problem, but you guys are spot on. Well, his car's handling good still. He's run some pretty decent lap times that last time by. Him and Edward Keselowski Wallace, almost identical times, all 3180s. So it hasn't slowed up a bit. Seeing quite a lot of drop off in the tires. Now the lap times seem to have really slowed down, Rusty. We're getting, uh, you know, getting pretty close to uh, slowing down almost two seconds. Well, right now, the last pit stop most of these guys made it was lap 125. These cars are going about 80 laps on fuel. So I'm figuring somewhere between 200 and 205 to get in. Had a near miss by rookie Justin Allgaier a moment ago. Allgaier is in a backup car. He had to go to the back of the pack after uh, wrecking his primary car. And this car went way up across the racetrack. There you see it again, Doc. That they get a little bit loose going in. He can't turn the wheel to the left. He's got to drive the car straight. And as soon as you get into those marbles, all that loose rubber up there, it won't turn Let at it go. all. Do you hear that? Yeah, here all that's that rubber hitting right the bottom now, of the fender. You did the right thing there. Like driving out a rock road. Didn't That's what it sounds like in the car. Six position. Stenhouse is sixth and Light is seventh. And he would like that position. There's the 33 car of Hornaday behind him. He is being shown a lap down. He would be the lucky dog if he were to get another caution flag. He'd be the first car a lap down. Yeah, I can tell Hornaday, he was racing Bliss for that lucky dog. And he's about four tenths of a second better than Bliss right now. So. He is solidly in the position to get that lucky dog uh, if the caution came out now. Well, up front, it is Kyle Busch. But, folks, the lead for Kyle Busch was uh, over three seconds back on lap 165. And now it is about a second and a half between him and Carl Edwards because cousin Carl is closing. And all the leaders are closing in on pit stops somewhere around lap 200 to 205. So. We'll step aside and see if they come down pit road or if Carl can continue to move in here on Kyle Busch with less than 60 laps to go. Kyle Busch has led only once, but it's been for the last 65 consecutive laps. Caution at Milwaukee for the second time tonight. Debris on the racetrack. And the leaders, this may be the final pit stop because we have had so much green flag competition. And there are the leaders. Kyle Busch, Carl Edwards, Keselowski, Stephen Wallace, Wimmer. That's the top five as they head down. Let's go down to our Toyo Tires triple pits. Jamie. And the 18 and the 60, the closest they have been all night. Carl Edwards on top of your screen. He said the balance has been great. He actually had more laps that were faster than Kyle Busch than not. They're going to make another air pressure adjustment. It's been working well. Kyle Busch, the 18, air pressure adjustment, only four tires. He's free everywhere. Dave? Bottom of the screen, the counterintuitive race car has been judged too tight. They will remove air pressure from the left front tire and make a wedge adjustment as well. Four tires for Keselowski. He follows the 18 and the 60. Race off of pit road and remember it's critical that you do not speed on exit of pit road here. The speed limit 35 miles an hour. Stephen Light's grip getting him in and out in a hurry, gaining a spot. Eric Darnell's bunch up two spots for the six car. And a big break for Kevin Harvick Incorporated driver Ron Hornaday. He's the Aaron's Lucky Dog free pass winner. He gets back on the lead lap now. We'll be back with the green in just a moment. Working caution for the second time tonight. The NASCAR Nationwide Series at Milwaukee presented by Toyo Tires. Kyle Busch, our leader. Carl Edwards second. Brad Keselowski, Steve Wallace. And by the way, a moment ago, the five car, Scott Wimmer, was uh, caught as too fast on exit of pit road. He'll have to go to the back of the pack. And by the way, Scott is our in-race reporter, so let's talk with him. Scott, Rusty Wallace, ESPN, you got us? I got you, Rusty. Man, it looks like that car is handling great, and you're flying out there, but it looks like you just got a penalty exiting pit road. You got to go to the back of the field. How's that going to affect you? Well, it's definitely not good. Uh, you know, the passing on Chevrolet has been really good tonight. It's really edgy. I hit my lines right, um, can run real fast, but uh, you get out a little bit. I, I've gotten out, outside group a couple of times, and 
almost ended our day, but um, we'll go to the back here. I think we'll be all right. We'll try to, to get back up there and, and see if we can battle those guys. Scott, has the track been changing a lot as the suns went down? Have you noticed a big handling difference in your car? I thought I was going to tighten up quite a bit. My car has been free all night. And we just took one more big swing at it. I hope we got it there. And um, You know, a good thing right now is uh, we're starting at the back here. If we want, we can uh, come in and take uh, tires at the end of the race. But uh, I don't know. Hopefully we can get up there. I think everybody's fighting the same thing. They all look pretty free. So hopefully uh, we hit our car right and we can move on up. All right, Scott, you guys are doing a great job. You're doing a great job. We'll get out of here and hope you have a good night. Thanks, Rick. That was Wausau, Wisconsin driver, Scott Wimmer. He's finished second here. He's finished third here, or sixth, but he's never won here in a nationwide car at his home racetrack. Tough break here, having to go all the way to the back of the pack there with that pit road penalty. It really is. You know, it, it's a shame. You know, when you listen to him talk about how important it is to race here, and that car was really fast, but like he said, it's edgy. We saw him get out of the groove a couple times and then get up in the marbles. He was the fastest car on the racetrack right before that happened, so the caution helped him but then the pit road speeding penalty obviously hurt him. Well, Kyle Busch has led 72 laps. He has led the most laps of anyone tonight. In the last seven races, Kyle Busch has led the most laps, but he has only won twice. And folks, the kind of luck he has had this year, he has uh, been leading uh, with 10 laps to go in eight races, but only won four of them. So folks, stay tuned. Anything <laughs> could happen when uh, Rowdy Busch is at the front of the field. And behind him, by the way, a very hungry Carl Edwards hoping to get to victory lane. Remember what happened last year? Carl had a little shove with Clint Boyer to be able to get by to get this win because he had not won a race yet in 2008. Well, these rest of these competitors, Jerry, are saying, man, these guys had to start to tail the field and they're already back up the front. This isn't fair. How can they keep doing it? But they do it. Carl Edwards was reeling in Kyle Busch right before the caution came out. We'll see if he can hang with him. Kyle awfully good on the restarts, but Carl hanging about a half a car length back. Okay, these restarts are key right now. These tires are fresh, but the air pressures are really low. And these cars kind of wobble all over the place for the first four or five laps, so that pressure comes up. Not four and a half, five car lengths between Kyle and Carl. Kyle not able to get away. Third place is Brad Keselowski. The one car there, Mike Bliss, is the first car a lap down. He's in between the 88 and the 60. And that's the one thing you gotta remember up there. One car is trying to get that lucky dog position back. Here's the 66, Stephen Wallace, who had been the fastest car on the race. I can move all the way up into fourth position. And now after the pit stop again quick, he was trying to move in on the 88 car for third. I tell you, all these cars are sparking tonight. You saw how Bush's car, now Stephen's car. I, I just think that what you're seeing now is just low air pressure is causing this. Yeah. Low air pressure, you know, whatever's going on with the, with the uh, brake ducts, Rusty. It seems like maybe well, on a pit stop, sometimes if you pull those hoses tight, it'll pull the brake duct a little closer to the rotor and it'll spark for a few laps. Best finish of the year, seventh twice for Stephen Wallace. His career best finish, fifth twice. Fifth position, the sixth car of Eric Darnell able to make the pass on Stephen Light. Whoa, the 62 car gets out of shape and gets up into uh, Ricky Stenhouse. A little bit of a bump there. Stenhouse able to make it on by, as does the 47. A lot of guys trying to get up there and get this lucky dog so they can get themselves back in position. You see Coleman trying to make a three wide down the back straightaway. Now they kind of all wisely get side by side again. Brad Coleman, if you just joined our coverage, uh, went up across the racetrack on lap 128, running in 10th spot, had to come down pit road, thought he had a tire going down. That's what put him a lap down back in 23rd. He has driven this car now back into the 16th position. Coleman's had a good run tonight until he had that problem, like you said, Jerry. Ricky Stenhouse has been fantastic tonight also, too. I mean, this guy's pretty doggone impressive. And what about Eric Almirola also? Eric's done a good job in that 40 car. Up front, Carl Edwards now moving in on Kyle Busch. Edwards has led only 
one lap tonight. That was uh, when everyone was coming on the pit road to make pit stops. He stayed out to get that one lap and the five bonus points, but he has not been able to lead in competition tonight. Hey, it looks like if he's going to get around Kyle Busch, he's just going to have to get that nose and some clean air. Either get the whole car down below to get some air in that front end or else get on the outside. Because, man, when you get bumper to bumper like this, that car behind you always takes off pushing the front end. Edwards' position. These two guys came all the way from Sonoma, California. A 2,200 mile jet flight, two helicopters, and now starting at the back of the pack. Up a part, take your time. You'll get two pretty good race cars, and Carl Edwards hungry to get that first win here in 2009. It looks like Carl's car is pretty good. Again, early in the run, uh, as, as now as the run goes on, that may change, but right now it looks like Carl's car is a little bit better through the center of the corner, which has allowed him to have a little bit more speed up off. Here he goes inside of the 18 car. Tell you what, these Fords are having a great night tonight. Look, Stenhouse early in the run, and now Carl Edwards. And here we go, side-by-side -side racing. I'll tell you, this track has been great tonight for side-by-side -side racing. And I would have never believed that, too, Ray. It's, you're exactly right. It's, it's been wonderful tonight for side-by-side, -side, and I think that the bottom's given up a little bit. Two championship contenders going at it, and Carl clear, Roberts clear. Good job, bud. takes a spot away. He does a nice job getting around. Whoa, in the 20 car. Goes around and comes up against the concrete. A tough break for this kid, but a good break for Scott Wimmer. It'll allow him to close back up and come get those fresh tires he was talking about. Yeah, it looks like Mike Bliss is going to get the lucky dog this time by. They're racing hard to get that. And I hate this for Brad because he's running this car part time. Really wanted to good, put a good showing in tonight. He just won't be able to do that. Yeah, if Desire and Want to got you to victory lane, this young man would win every week. Here's Brad Coleman. Let's see if he got a little help. Yeah, a little help there from the 38 car. And Doc, he's just not his doing. He's just in the wrong position there on the inside of Brendan Gaughan with a 38 car packed behind him. Just makes you really loose. I think he packed behind him on the rear bumper there a little bit, Rusty. Well, think, yeah, <laughs> but I think he had to slow up a little bit because he was yeah. getting loose. I think the 38 helped him get a little looser there as well. A little yeah. nudge from behind by Jason Leffler. Third caution flag tonight. Contact in the 38 and the 20, and it is Coleman that goes up into the outside wall and gets the crunch on his Toyota. Milwaukee, Wisconsin is the home and the headquarters of an American icon, Harley Davidson Motorcycles, and my, oh my, every year they come from far and wide to be able to test drive the Harleys here and come out to watch some great NASCAR nationwide action at the Milwaukee Mile. Coverage of Major League Baseball continues on ESPN and ESPN2 with two nights of action. First, 8 Eastern on Sunday night. Baseball presented by Taco Bell on ESPN. The National League West leading Dodgers take on the Angels. Then catch Monday night baseball on ESPN2 at 7 Eastern as the Cardinals face the Mets. ESPN News will be shown in both the St. Louis and New York markets. Both games are part of the ALNL showdown presented by State Farm on ESPN, ESPN2, and ESPN360. Well, let's go down to the crew chief of the uh, 18 car, Jamie. Jason Ratcliffe, caution comes out. You guys are second. Did that help you or hurt you? I, mean, I don't know. We've been uh, we've been a little free on new tires, so I think he's just waiting for it to come to him right now. He's probably still a little bit loose. We got about 40 laps to go here. Um, so, you know, maybe he can stick with him right here, let the car come to him, and then we should have enough at the end. Sit in the catbird seat, Doc. And Jamie, remember the last few weeks it's been Kyle Busch leading late and someone's been able to go by him. Maybe he's going to try to reverse the role. So I don't need to lead until I have to lead here in the late lap. So maybe I get to go to victory lane. It's not over till it's over. I'm not saying nothing. <laughs> Can't be predicted right now, that's for sure. If the car is pretty free right now for Kyle Busch, it's just going to get better and better in these final laps, right? Rick? It's going to get better the longer, he run, the longer he runs. But also remember that when he's behind the car, it'll tighten it up. So it might be a little bit better position for him right now. He'll probably be a little bit tighter behind Carl than he was in front of him. Oh, that clean air is everything in the world. I mean, I'll take that any time. So it's not going to be easy for Kyle because it looks like Carl's got clean track now and that car is handling good. They will black flag the 32 car, Bernie Lamar, for passing on the left before the start finish line on the restarts. You can only pass to the right side. You know, that's something they allow to do in short track racing, Jerry, around the country. But in NASCAR, you just don't do that. You got to be real careful not to abuse that rule here.
12 and 11 car they're battling uh, for the lucky dog the 11 is legacy and the 12 is our Allgaier. both those are rookie competitors hey sometimes you just see the hardest race in the pack is for the lucky dog and uh, that might be one of the reasons NASCAR still loves this rule because it gives these guys a chance and man does it make some good racing. There's a battle for third position. The six car Eric Darnell trying to move in now and come uh -oh, back. On the, uh oh. Whoa. Uh -oh. On the racetrack to 12 and 11 both go around. Hold the brake. Yellow's out. Back it down. That will bring out caution for the fourth time tonight. Jerry, these guys have got to race each other super hard. Pull around, come on. Let's not I lose mean, any more laps. Sometimes this is the problem. And does that now give the 70 car the lucky dog? There were our two lucky dog contenders right there. Yeah, if you're involved in a, in a reason to bring out the caution, you cannot get the lucky dog. Let's take a look at this. Justin Algar just gets loose, slides up in the scant legacy, and there you go. That's the. That's the effect of laying your right side against somebody on the outside. You just get real loose. Happens all the time. Right in front of the third, fourth, and fifth place cars. Look at Keselowski cut and just get down on the inside of the 12. Caution for the fourth time tonight. Let's ride along with Justin Allgaier and watch what he saw as they went into turn three. Start will come next time by with 34 laps to go here at the Milwaukee Mile. Carl Edwards, Kyle Busch racing for the top spot. Our coverage tonight presented by Toyo Tires. We've been talking about Kyle versus Carl for the championship all year long. When one guy is your direct rival, Kyle, does it affect your relationship? Just more difficult because we're the two, you know, championship contenders. It's going to be uh, a heated battle all the way down to the end. But he said, we get along fine. Well, you know, for the first time this year, Carl Edwards has a car that I think is it could be dominant at the end of the race. And uh, we haven't seen anyone get up and give Kyle Busch this much trouble. But I still want to see these guys get to the end, and let's see what happens. But it's great to see Carl out front with a strong race car. See, Kyle has added 100 points to his lead over Carl in the Nationwide Series Championship standings over the last five races. 34 laps to go tonight. Will one of them be holding the trophy at night's end, or is something crazy going to happen? Keselowski's in third. <laughs> First double file restarts when you need them. <laughs> Here we go. Carl Edwards pulls down on the inside and has just hammered the throttle, but now Kyle Busch has pulled to within a car length of him. This time, Kyle's not going to let him get away. Well, Kyle's really good on his restarts. I mean, he sails at the top of that track, tries to get it done. Eric Darnell taking the third spot away from the 88 car. Brad Keselowski saw Darnell's car coming back to life. Yeah, he made some huge adjustments on that car because we saw it when the race started and the sun was out, it went pretty far backwards, and now he's driving it all the way up to the front. More on the six car, Dave. How about that? He called it a 10 on a scale out of 10 tight two different times during this race. Crew Chief Mike Kelly has made a number of adjustments on that race car and gotten it better. Remember, the first adjustment was real small. Then they took bigger swings at it and finally got it to where Eric could compete with this race car. So a good night for the six car and a very good night for the Roush Fenway cars. Currently being shown in first, third, and sixth. And two of those drivers uh, have fewer than 10 starts in this series combined. Eric Darnell and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Well, that's something that Jack has always been known for. He, he, he discovers his talent. He brings them up. You know, he did it with Carl uh, and, and certainly, uh, I'm sorry, Carl Edwards. And now he's got the, well, he's got a couple young, good, good young guys in his camp. I tell you what, they really woke up this car, Eric Darnell. It's been falling off pretty bad as the race goes on, and maybe they fixed it on this last stop to keep this, the legs under this thing, keep it going. He's going to be all over Kyle Busch here in a second. That's the best thing that can happen for Carl Edwards, his Roush Fenway teammate, is if Eric Darnell can get up there and begin to push Kyle Busch a little bit. Now you rough him up a little bit, put some pressure on him like he's doing there. Now look, I'm going outside of Kyle. I wonder if there's something going on with Kyle's car because it is not near as strong as it, it had been looking at the lap times. I've watched several cars out there in a restart having a tough time getting going with all that rubber buildup on the tires. 
Because remember, these guys are restarting with older tires. I don't think you're going to see anybody hit pit road right now. And if the caution comes out, this problem might happen again. Eric Darnell takes a spot away, takes second position, moves Kyle Busch back to third. We talked to Jason Rackliff, who just joined our covers, and Jason said about 10 laps ago the 18 car was a little too free, thought it would get better during these final 35 to 40 laps. Well, Doc, he better hurry up because the 60's getting away. Battle shaping up here. Stephen Wallace in the 66 in sixth spot in the five car of Scott Wimmer, who because of a speeding penalty had to go all the way to the back of the pack and is now driven all the way back into the top ten. See Peyton Sellers there a lap down, trying to keep up with these guys and try to get his lap back. It's like Stephen's car has kind of fell off a little bit here. Lost a couple positions. I see a little bit of fender damage on the left front fender could have caused it. You know, Rusty, I think what we might be seeing is some of the cars that were really good on the long runs don't seem to be as good here on the short runs, and we haven't really seen short runs all night. It seems, uh, you know, like Steven's car looked a little bit loose right there, but the longer we run, the better they'll get. The problem is we don't have that much longer to run. Yeah, that is. You're exactly right. 28 laps to go. And, Ray, let me ask you a question. If the caution come out right now, are we going to see these guys pit or are they just going to stay out there? Well, it depends. You know, you, what are we looking at? Uh, 12 cars on the lead lap depends on where you are. If you're up in that top uh, six, seven, eight, you're not going to pit. Again, unlike the Cup Series where they have double file restarts where you're, you start alongside the person you're racing, up to 10 laps to go here, I believe we still have um, uh, lap cars up on the inside. So if you're, uh, we've got 12 cars in the lead lap right now. So if you're ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th, maybe you'd pit. Yeah, if you're back there, you get really got nothing to lose. Eighth position, Stephen Light, the 29 car, the one of Mike Bliss. Bliss able to get uh, the lucky dog, get back on the lead lap, and now he's making the best of it. Being moved all the way up into eighth position, so his car getting a little racier here in the final 30 laps. Carl Edwards leading the way. Darnell, Bush, and Keselowski, along with Stenhouse Jr., in the top five. Next time by, it'll be just 20 laps remaining in the NASCAR Nationwide Series at Milwaukee, presented by Toyo Tires. And what a torrid battle we have between the one car of Mike Bliss and the five car of Scott Wimmer for seventh spot. And Rusty Bliss has a little bit of an advantage. Yeah, Bliss has got 13 lap newer tires on his car over Wimmer. And it seems like it's really making a difference right now. But Peyton Sellers up there, he's a lap down that orange car. And he's really making a rough on these guys right now. They've been trying to get around him. They just can't seem to get around the lap car of Peyton. Peyton's doing a good job out there, driving that baby hard. Finally, the one car trying to get underneath him, but just can't get enough bite there. Let's check in his pit. Shannon. You guys, when they came down pit road for those four fresh tires, uh, they also made an air pressure adjustment just to help that tight condition. Now, I spoke with Mike Liss today. He told me that one of the things this team really needs to work on is looking at the big picture. Rather than just being fast in practice as he looks to the inside of that five car, he said they need to be there at the end of the race. That's what they worked on today. Right now, as he goes under the five for a position. And both those cars powered by Hendrick engines, so they're going down the straightaway pretty equal. You know, the horsepower is about the same. It just comes down, as Rusty said, a little bit fresher tires on the one car. And Mike Bliss will get the position, at least, uh, well, he had the position anyway. Getting down to the final laps here, no one wants to give anything away, and particularly Scott Wimmer, because this is as he's never been able to win at the home racetrack. Inside of 20 to go, they are chasing Carl Edwards. And now Wimmer goes back around to the, up, the high side. Again, great side-by-side -side racing tonight. Well, I tell you what, it is hard. These two are racing hard, but now Bliss has got the clean air and the fresher tires to see if he can run down the guys up front now. He has made the pass now. Whoa, tire going down on the five car where there was some, or tire rubbing anyway on the left front. Now he's just got to hope that when he dives down a corner, that tire knocked that fender back out of the way. I'm going to quit smoking, but it's smoking hard right now. Yeah, there's just probably too many laps left for that thing. He's going to end up, uh, end up rubbing that thing through. It's rubbing in a bad spot too, Rusty. And the further he turns it left, the harder it's going to rub. Yeah, you're exactly right. He needs to turn it left real hard and just jam it down a corner and try to knock it out of the way. That's, that's what they hope. They hope that the tire going up and down will kind of hammer it out of the way before it blows it out. 
Stephen. We had a little bit of contact uh, there uh, between him and the one on that pass. It really doesn't take much on that spot on the fence. Ray, as a veteran crew chief, how long do you let this uh, go on before you decide to call him in? Well, I'll tell you, it's hard to call a guy in in that, in that top 10 position, but I have seen so many cars end up in the fence, you know, with losing a left front tire. Now, they were running hard in the... Uh, the one was on the inside and just moved up a little bit and, and Scott just he was already on the gas. It's really hard to judge. Well, let's see if this thing uh, cleared this fender. Let's see if this smoke has stopped. I've seen it happen several times and <laughs> the bad thing about it, if it does and that left front will blow and that baby will slide up in the marbles and probably get in the wall. Let's well, it, it really doesn't take much, does it? Russell? No, it doesn't, especially where you said that's that part of the sidewall is very, very thin. And uh, it, it'll blow quick. And it, it, how hard is it to see when you're making the corner like that out the windshield of that car? How hard is it to see where your left front fender's at? Well, it is pretty hard because those fenders are pretty low and you're sticking that nose up underneath there. But look at these two. These guys have been going back at it lap after lap. Kyle Busch, Eric Darnell. Battle for second spot. Darnell was the pole sitter and continues to hold off Kyle Busch. You're wrecking sideways, man. You're wrecking sideways. If I don't slow it down like that, I get sideways. Lots of emotion coming out of these cars here as the laps click down. Eric Darnell trying to get a career best finish, got his very first pole and only his sixth start here in the NASCAR Nationwide Series, trying to hold off one of the best. And now Kyle Busch gets a fender alongside the inside. And you got to understand the emotion this Darnell family is going through. This is Milwaukee, man. This is their Daytona 500, like I said in the countdown show. He's got a whole pile of people here watching him. Eric does, and that thing's getting it's getting better and better. That's Danny Darnell, his father, who was an ASA competitor, ran here many, many times. Eric said he came here when he was just a baby. He ran his first late model race here in 2000. He said, I remember coming here watching my famous grandfather, Bay Darnell, one of the all-time greats for USAC stock car racing. Well, he was great around his racetrack, Bay. He's here watching tonight. This kid's doing a good job. They must have really... Whatever that last adjustment was, Ray, they really helped this car a lot. Yeah, you know, for, you know, I'm, I'm wondering now, I've heard people say they thought the track was going to tight, seem like it started to get tight, but maybe it's freed back up because Kyle's car has gone to loose, and now we've had cars that, that were tight at the beginning of the night that are running fast. Ten laps to go, and it is Carl Edwards, our leader. Carl has been leading with ten to go. 20 times and has gone on to win 16 of those 20 times. So pretty much a sure bet. But here's the best battle on the racetrack here for second spot. I don't see it stopping anytime soon either. It's been going on lap after lap. Eric just gets that car up a little off the bottom. It gets a little momentum off that corner. And Kyle just can't do anything with him. I think Kyle's car is free enough to where he's down on the bottom and he's got a good line, but he can't get in the gas pedal. It, it, and with with uh, Eric being up a little bit higher, he gets a little bit better run up off the corner. He can get in the throttle a little harder. A year ago, it was Eric Darnell, by the way, that came here and uh, set up and qualified Carl Edwards, car number 60, when Carl was coming from Sonoma. Eric didn't get to race the car. Carl started that car in the back of the pack and went all the way through to win the race. And Eric said, you know what? I missed out on getting a chance to race. Well, tonight is Eric Darnell's opportunity, maybe not to win, but to have maybe the run of his life thus far in his young career. Yeah, Carl's got that thing going. He's kind of checked out. He's headed back to Sonoma right now in that race car, I think. <laughs> He is last time by four tenths of a second faster than the second place car of Darnell. But Darnell's in traffic too, racing with Kyle Busch. If you ever get a clean lap, let's really see how fast the kid can really run. There goes the left front tire. Tire is down on the five car. We stay green, no caution. Hey, come on down, come on down, come on down, come on down. And it's not going to affect the race because he's on pit road right now, guys. What a terrible break for Scott Wimmer driving the five car for Earnhardt Jr. And just left Hickory. side, just left side, left side only. And as a crew chief and a driver, you just hope that that tire, that rub will go away. But when it doesn't, this is what happens. But I will tell you, he got lucky. Usually a crash. He made it about 13 laps with this tire rubbing. And now with eight to go, he's on pit road. Second place, here comes Kyle Busch. Kyle says he's real loose. Let's see if he can hold on the bottom because Right now, he's in a real loose position. But the cars seem to tighten up the longer they run, though. Car yeah. might be coming to them. Yeah, again, it's what you talked about, Rusty, with those uh, brake rotors. 
glowing. It, it, it puts air pressure in those front tires and makes that car a little bit tighter. Like you were talking, Ray Eric Darnell using that middle groove and getting good forward bite coming up off the corner and able to pull the 18 car. Carrying oh. that momentum up. Those guys are just a little, run up just a little racing room right there. Kyle can get in and get to the bottom, but if Eric can get back to the gas a little bit harder, a little bit sooner. Now, while well, these guys are battling, that 88 car is moving in on them. Brad Keselowski back behind, and there comes Brad, and now he is closing in in a hurry, but running out of time. I'm telling you guys, we have seen some great racing so far tonight, all through the field. Yeah, I'm really impressed with this speedway, especially this tire that Goodyear's brought. It's a great tire they got for the short tracks. It's really sticking good and lasting long. Good night for Goodyear here. Kyle Busch able to make the pass for second spot with just five Water's laps clear. to go. You're clear. You're clear. Hey, Eric's getting pretty high up against those marbles. He just needs to keep that car just a little bit lower right now. Look at that. Brad's car is really coming alive in the bottom right now. Eric looks like he's just getting in a little deep and that front end takes off on him. It yeah, might have got his tires just a little bit hot uh, racing Kyle there. Four laps to go, guys. So it's Carl Edwards, a leader. Kyle Busch now has moved around for second spot. Then this battle here between Eric Darnell and Brad Keselowski for third. Ricky Stenhouse being shown back in the fifth spot in the 16 car. Last time by Edwards, three tenths of a second faster than Kyle Busch. Edwards is giving these cats a spanking tonight, that's for sure. What a difference a week makes. Last week, Carl Edwards was abysmal. The car struggled. He had three pit road speeding penalties, and the car just wouldn't run. Even though he had the penalties, the car was running he barely in the top 15. He ended up finishing 20th at Kentucky. I, I think Carl will tell you, last week in Kentucky must have been a full moon because everything went wrong. The car <laughs> wouldn't handle, handle right. He got the speeding penalties, but tonight he's got it right. And remember, guys, last year, this race was a turning point in the season for him. He got on a roll and really went after the point championship. It was the difference in his year, and here is uh, the final lap. Whoa, almost some contact there between Keselowski and Darnell. It's a race right now, right here. These two, they're running the closest of anybody on the track. Eric just wants to bring this baby home with a good finish. Two laps to go. It'll be white flag this time by for Carl Edwards. And folks, Carl Edwards is Finished second four times in 2009. He has nine top five finishes. He has not been to victory lane since the final race at Homestead at the end of 2008. Here's a great battle for position for, for, for third spot, and Keselowski gets a position. But here comes Darnell back on the inside. So now the 88 car will take the spot away, and Carl Edwards from the back of the pack, just like a year ago at Milwaukee, comes to Milwaukee, and finally in 2009, cousin Carl will break through and get his first win of the season. And man, what a good feel. That's some good medicine to, after what he went through. Good job, buddy. Good job. Great work. Dan Stillman, I will meet you in victory lane. Good job, buddy. Good job, everybody. Great work. You too, man. You were awesome, man. That's uh, that's pretty good, man. No practice, come here win. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like my home track, too, you know. Jack Rouse celebrating with the high fives, a day where Jack and Carl both flew all the way from the West Coast, a day that began in Sonoma, California. When they came here a year ago, Carl Edwards was fourth in the points, hadn't won in 36 races. He was 225 points back, and it was this win that propelled him on a march. He ended up just 21 points shy of the championship behind Clint Boyer. Man, I hope he stayed in shape doing that backflip. You know, he hadn't done it in a while. Since November of last year, these fans know what's coming. Carl Edwards officially will be credited with leading twice for 46 left. There he comes. <laughs> and he makes me nervous every time he does that, but he always nails it. Well, let's go down where Jamie is caught up with his crew chief, Dan Stillman. What a difference a week makes. I know a lot of people looking at you, the crew chief, you get the fingers pointed. What does this victory mean for you? Uh, it means a lot. You know, the whole team, Everybody's worked so hard, and uh, 
nobody ever gives up and uh, to come back here and win this race it's uh, just it's it's really outstanding I'm really happy congratulations we'll let you go to victory lane we'll meet Carl Edwards there Doc. you said it Jamie what a difference a week make these guys couldn't have been lower a week ago at Kentucky nothing went right the race car was abysmal they had problems on pit road with speeding penalties and tonight just like a year ago Carl Edwards has come from the back of the pack a long journey from Sonoma and from the back of the pack all the way to Victory Lane. Let's go down with Shannon. Kyle Busch had to start at the back of the field. Typical Kyle Busch fashion made his way to the front. Seemed to have fallen off in those last 50 laps. How much did the car change? It's just what we do. We come here to finish second. Let's talk about some of the battles. Great for the fans. You were involved with two of them, the 60 and the 6. What's that like for a driver, especially when you're competing for a championship and running alongside the guy that you're running for the championship with? It wasn't no battle. He drove right by me. Combo's Toyota was fine, just not good enough. So, uh, unfortunately, we didn't win tonight. Thanks, Z-Line, Nos awesome Energy Drink, Toyota. We'll go on next week. Good luck tomorrow in Sonoma. Kyle Busch finished second tonight. Obviously frustrated, and you can't blame a driver. You don't come anywhere to finish second. He wants to win, and obviously he's won four times this year. This one is the first victory for Carl Edwards. A long journey, a long season, the first 15 races, and now finally, just like a year ago, Carl Edwards starts at the back of the pack and comes all the way to victory lane for the first time at the What a night at the Milwaukee Mile, the NASCAR Nationwide Series races history. And Carl Edwards has driven from uh, Sonoma, California. He flew here and then driven from the back of the pack to go to Victory Lane for the first time in 2009. And he's in the A.J. Foyt Victory Lane. Carl, your biggest competition this year, the 18 car. What does it feel like to beat him straight up and get to victory lane this year? I'm not going to lie. That felt really good. You know, uh, Dan Stillman and these guys have worked so hard. This save a lot fusion is great. I got to thank Scott's and Ford Motor Company and Aflac and everybody and just all the fans for sticking behind us. I mean, it's been a while since we won a race and we started up here last season and uh, it's just almost uh, too good to be true. You know, hopefully the rest of the season goes like the rest of last season did, but just can't thank Save a lot enough and uh, happy Father's Day uh, early out there to my dad and Darren Beach just had uh, his new father and uh, he's back with us and just can't say enough about Dan Stillman. This has been a, a lot of work this year and he's done well. How about Colin Brown? He set the car up for yeah. you today. What is it like for you traveling 1800 miles to get here knowing you hadn't turned one lap in this car? It's fun. <laughs> it's great. I mean, you come out here, I mean, I, I rode in the back of a real nice airplane. I got a helicopter ride. My, my wife, Kate, and uh, came with me, and, and we get to race in front of all these fans and, and to win and uh, be standing here with you. This is, uh, this is good. I, I can't wait to race tomorrow. The snow going to be fun. All right, well, he mentioned it last year. This was the turnaround point. We'll have to keep our eyes on the 60 and see if they're back. Doc? This is where it all began a year ago, the march toward the front came up just short of another nationwide championship. There's his wife, Kate, lovely wife. And she will head back to Sonoma where Carl will start 34th on Sunday. Carl Edwards 21st win in his 156 start, which ties him for 11th all time with Dale Earnhardt and Harry Gant. There is the Polish victory lap. NASCAR Nationwide Series at the Milwaukee Mile, presented by Toyo Tires. Toyo Tires is driven to perform, and in part by Verizon Wireless. Get the inside track from Penske Racing, race analysis from our drivers, plus highlights and more on VCast. After 15 of 35 races here in 2009, uh, Carl Edwards has finally, finally gone to victory lane, and the point standings show that he has now gained back 10 points on Kyle Busch. He was down 137 coming into the weekend. It's 127 now between he and Carl. You see Brad Keselowski back in third, Leffler, Logano. Look all the way down, Stephen Wallace in 10th spot. Stephen recording his best finish of the year in sixth place. Let's go down to Dave. Stephen Wallace from 28th place qualifier to 6th place finisher. How'd you do that? Well, it was all, you know, a great job by the U.S. Fidelis guys. You know, it's kind of funny because those guys, they always get on me about uh, the U.S. Fidelis car, not that, that it hasn't been running good. And it seems like 
every time I run the five hour car, it runs good. So we finally got a good run for those guys. So I'm real happy about that. But uh, got a new crew chief this week, Trip Bruce. You know, uh, we you know didn't kind of change some things there. We had a really good car and uh, in practice, I just you know was doing two is qualifying. So we. Uh, Made some air pressure adjustments. That was about it, man. That thing drove straight to the front. You know, it was a really good car. Uh, you know, I think we had a, you know, probably a second or third place car, but the lap cars just, I mean, killed us towards in there. So, there ain't nothing you can do about that. But we got some uh, little bit of momentum on the side car. Ain't tore up, so we'll take her back next week. We saw a lot of great side by side battles all night long, Steve. Where'd you guys make up your time on the track? I think uh, on the track for us was definitely on on uh, the longer runs. You know, our car. Uh, it was really good on long runs. You know, we had really, really, really low left side air on it. So uh, the car, you know, kept turning real good. You know, the thing had good four bite all night. So uh, on the bottom, keep it turning, you know. So that's what we did, and it ran good. So thanks. They got real close to a top five tonight. Well, Brad Keselowski, it's a fourth top three finish for this 88 team. How was the car tonight? Pretty good. You know, we uh, had a strong run with the GoDaddy.com Chevrolet and uh, got up front there and had some fun and led some laps. and. Uh, you know, it's just uh, a great racetrack. I really enjoy coming here, really enjoy the fans and the people. And I'm sure would like to have one of those trophies like what Carl's got over there. But uh, we're working on it. We're just, we're there every week. We just need a little bit more to win. And uh, we're trying to find that and working real hard uh, to get to, to be the best Chevrolet every week. And we just need to get Chevrolet to Victor Lane. Now, towards the end of the race, you had a near miss with the 11 and the 12. They had some problems. You avoided it. Walk me through that. Yeah, you know, you can kind of see it coming. Uh, those two raced really hard, and uh, they weren't giving each other in room. So, um, you know, it's just part of racing here. It's uh, a tight little racetrack, and it's kind of quirky, and, uh, you know, we're lucky to get through that one. Brett Keselowski said this three-race stretch was when he really needed to capitalize, and he definitely did that. Top three finishes. Duck? Boy, Mr. Consistency here in the top threes and top fives and now third in the point standings. And a couple of teammates uh, shaking hands. There is Eric Darnell, the pole sitter, going over to congratulate his teammate Carl Edwards on the win here at Milwaukee tonight. Back with more in just a moment. Lots more motorsports programming coming your way for the weekend tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern time. Note the time now, 11 a.m. Uh, ES NASCAR now presented by Five Hour Energy on ESPN2. And, of course, on uh, Monday, the roundtable. Alan Bessick will be there uh, along with our Ray Evernham, Mike Wallace, Ricky Craven, 5 o'clock Eastern time for NASCAR now. If you like IndyCar action out of Newton, Iowa, the Iowa Corn Indy 250 coming your way tomorrow, 1 o'clock Eastern time on ABC. And, of course, we invite you to join us next Saturday on ABC, 2.30 Eastern Time, NASCAR Nationwide Series presented by CeCe's Pizza up at New Hampshire Speedway. There's a 29 car of Stephen Light that will officially be listed as finishing in eighth place tonight. Now, there's been a friendly competition for much of the first half of the year among three different drivers to determine who gets their name on the car for the second half of the season. Take a look. Clint got his feelings hurt because at our photo shoot, my name was on the roof of the car. I was like, why does he get his name on the door? I've been driving a car, Holiday Inn car for a couple years and won, you know, quite a few races in it. I don't, I don't know what he thought was going to happen. He was the reigning champion, so he, you know, thought he needed a little respect. So we made a wager. I might need to get this in writing. But at some point in the year, whoever has won the most races gets to put their name on the car. Luckily for me, my first four races are like three of my best tracks. You know, just a little more incentive for us to go out and win. To be able to say that, oh look, Jeff Burton, or hey look, Boyer's driving the car with my name on it. I know it would eat at Clint, because Clint was already talking about, man, I, I really hope I don't have to drive this car without my name on it. I just really want to see Jeff Burton climb in uh, my car with my name on it. I think it'd be great. It's my car. They're just borrowing it every now and then. It's, it's my car. Well, the scorecard right now, Jeff Burton has uh, driven seven times, his best finish sixth at California. Right now, Clint Boyer leads in the standings. He has four, four races. He has finished third three times. And uh, Stephen Light making his fourth start. He had a sixth place finish at Nashville and a, uh, an eighth place finish tonight. And Dave Burns is with him. Stephen Light came home with an eighth place finish tonight here. And uh, man, a lot of good racing out there. I know you wish you'd finished up a little bit higher, but how was your night all over? I started off really good and uh, we ended practice really good. I was really excited about the race and we were just fighting uh, tight from the center off early in the race, even though you know, we, when we were running second and third there with Brad and, and the 16, 
and uh, Holiday and Chevrolet, just the more we tried to free it up off, the looser it got in, and uh, we went back to struggling on entry. So uh, I don't know. I guess we were better off being tight. Um, fell off a lot at the end. I'm, I'm disappointed because we really had a good car and there in the beginning. If I could have got around Brad without that lap traffic, I think I could have drove away from them guys. But Solid and team did a great job on pit road, and uh, it's just a shame we lost the handle on it at the end, man. We had a good run going. And you had a car for a few weeks now. Yeah, uh, at least I had a It's good, not yours, but you have yes. to give it back to the other drivers. Yeah, at least we had a good run tonight, so I can think about that uh, the three weeks I have off. And then when I jump back in, at, uh, I believe it's St. Louis. We'll uh, go out it there and do better. See Steven in the 29 gateway, guys. Thank you, Dave. Uh, good run for him. And the only person that might have had a better run than Carl Edwards was the guy that's standing with Jamie. Jack Roush had three cars, Jamie, in the top five tonight. Very impressive run, and that's their fifth win on the year. Three cars in the top five, Jack. Two of those are your young guns. What does that say for you and the future of your team? Well, it bodes well for the young guns for next year. I look forward to having them in full programs next year for the Nationwide Series. You know, that I can't say too much about the coaching staff and what they've done with the pit stops this year. Of course, Dan Stillman was, was right on it tonight. Uh, Colin Braun did a great job. Uh, Carl didn't drive the car until uh, they dropped a green flag on it, and uh, so he didn't have a lap in the car. So Colin did a nice job. But you know, one thing we can't forget before we uh, before I get off here, you know, uh, Carl's uh, aunt uh, Terry has got uh, she's she's a little on demand right now, and he says that she's got a trophy coming. So we're going to carry this this glass trophy uh, from the from the. Uh, from the uh, Northern Tool uh, 500 race there, two, Northern Tool 250 it is, right? So she's got a, she's got a trophy coming, and I hope she's doing well. It was a great night for the 60 team, Jack, and they've been up and down this year. They hadn't won until tonight. Dan Stillman, you put him with Carl Edwards. What does it mean to see them in victory lane finally? Well, it just speaks to, you know, how it great people working together sometimes just takes a little while before they really gel. We've been better than we finished uh, on several occasions. Of course, the, uh, the 18 car has been really good all year, and they they've just wouldn't give you much room at all. And uh, tonight, uh, the 60 car was better. It's a big night for them. Smile on his face. We'll see what happens. This is going to shake up for the second half of the season, Doc. It certainly is. 103rd victory for Jack Roush in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. Jack has now won with six different drivers in this series. What an impressive team. Well, if you like what you saw tonight, folks, there's plenty more to come your way. We head to New Hampshire Motor Speedway next week on ABC, then Daytona, July 3rd, Chicago. You can read some of the great places we're headed for the NASCAR Nationwide Series. And tickets are available, www.nascar.com slash tickets to be on hand to watch in person the exciting NASCAR Nationwide Series race or tune into our coverage. There it is in front of you. Carl Edwards, a winner at Milwaukee, back with more in just a moment. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our loyal fans for your continued support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast. What a day for Carl Edwards, a 2,000-mile jet flight, a helicopter in from Sonoma. He and wife Kate get in the golf cart and then no need to save a lot early here in his Ford because he's at the back of the pack and Carl pushed a button from the drop of the green flag. Moving on the inside and Carl Edwards lap 205, just 45 laps to go. Something he hasn't done much of this year and that's pass that 18 car for the lead. Yeah, just a good handling car throughout the night. Real solid run. This, this team needed this. They need to get back on track and they got it tonight. Carl Edwards credited with leading twice for 46 laps and for the first time in 2009, the signature somersault for cousin Carl as he's able to celebrate in victory lane. A year ago, the same thing happened, and what a difference it made when they finally got to victory lane at Milwaukee. Look at the uh, before coming to Milwaukee and afterwards, he won seven races on the final 18 races of the year, you know, 13 top fives, and came within 21 points of winning a championship. And I guess, guys, it's all about winning begets winning, and it's all about momentum. It really is, but tonight, you know, I think it was about adjusting the car. Those guys that, that stayed after the car, the track seemed to have gone a little bit different direction, I thought, and Carl's car was just the best car at the end. You know, this racetrack has got real flat corners, much like Phoenix, Arizona. And I remember Carl's car out of Phoenix was awful fast. And, Jerry, you told me this was the same car. And I remember last time, I guess he blew an engine up. But, man, that thing was fast tonight. I guess they want to 
keep that baby in the garage and take care of that one because that was one special car tonight for Carl. What does this do for a team, for a driver? And I know Carl has been so frustrated because of what happened at Kentucky and the, the team are starting to second guess. Are we the right guys to get him into victory lane? Suddenly, everything clicks tonight. Just confidence. You know, they had a fast car and, and they got to race the 18 head to head and they beat them. You know, so now it's like, wow, wait a minute. They, they, they can beat somebody that, that's been unbeatable. They, they got a little chink in Superman's armor tonight. <laughs> I, I really think this was a really good medicine form because I think they left last week out of Kentucky very confused about what was going on but I will tell you last week's race was kind of a one-off that track was very very bumpy nobody could really figure it out good and now he got back to something normal and said okay we are good we are right we're not out the lunch we're okay I think this was a real uh, confusion proof race tonight that he needed now knowing what happened with Carl a year ago and if you're Kyle Busch and you realize this is a race that sort of started everything back in the right direction for Carl what are you thinking what's Kyle thinking on the 18 team uh, I think Kyle's still confident he's probably thinking okay what what's what made our car loose what adjustment didn't we get right he knows that team's strong but they they didn't get the adjustments right there at the end and he's going to find out why I think it's going to be a battle between the two of them going to the end. There's just no doubt about that. But, man, there were some young guys tonight that really showed some good runs. And uh, this is the opportunity stretch. We talked about this for three or four weeks now, Jerry, and a lot of guys really made uh, good runs out of this opportunity section of the schedule. We talked about the fresh faces making good runs here in this opportunity stretch. How about a guy who turned 51 years of age today, Ron Hornaday, coming back from a lap down for a good finish? Shannon. Doc, he just told me not to bring up the fact that it was his 51st birthday, but, of course, Doc Pun in the booth. He brought it up before we got down here. <laughs> I appreciate that. So you won in the truck race earlier today. Had a lot of fun in the KHI cars. I know you had the pit road speeding penalty, but you still finished ninth. How much fun did you have in the Nationwide Series here this evening? Oh, uh, my hat's off to Ernie Cope and all these guys on this Jimmy John's car. I mean, it was fast. I mean, I just, I, I blew it. Uh, pit road violation, and uh, we came back to, to rally up there. I mean, but uh, Kevin wanted the car loose, and it was really loose on, on the get-go, about, about 40 laps. It was the fastest thing out there, so. Um, learned a lot and uh, brought the car home in one piece for Kevin. But uh, got a dent in the right front and maybe the left rear. But other than that, uh, it was a good day altogether. Now, a lot of guys have been in this 33 car this season. It's sort of like the hot car. When are we going to see you back in this 33? Uh, ORP, unless I get fired again. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, we can't fire you on your birthday. <laughs> Kevin can do anything he wants to do. But uh, I really got to thank Kevin Delaney and uh, just. Just everybody but puts the thing together. It's so fun to drive KHI's car and Kevin Delaney puts the right people in the right place and it, it just shows it what, what they're doing with other people's cars out here and doing their bodies and, and their trucks and stuff. It just it, it says a lot for KHI. Well you got about an hour left to celebrate your birthday, so happy birthday, congratulations on a ninth place finish. And he spent his entire birthday in a race car or a race truck getting to victory lane early in the day. What a, I mean, what a career he's had, particularly this racetrack. Look at what he's done. Two wins in the truck series, one coming today. He's already won back in 2004 here in the Nationwide car. Well, he's like fine wine, Doc. He's not really getting just older. He's getting a lot better, right? Well, from one of the grizzled veterans to a rookie here, Jamie standing by with Justin Allgaier. Oh, boy, he had rookie stripes today the entire day. Went to a backup car from early on, and then tonight ended up 17th. What happened at the end when you spun? Uh, just trying too hard at the end. You know, we got ourselves uh, kind of behind the eight ball. We, we got caught speeding on pit road, which two weeks in a row, and, and uh, we were way below what we what we had written down for a, a, a time, or a, an RPM. So just an unfortunate uh, unfortunate night for us. You know, I hate it for Scott Legacy. He shouldn't have, shouldn't have gotten wrecked, and, and uh, hate it for, for everybody on the Verizon Wireless Dodge. We just, we've had one of those weekends. Our crew guys got stuck in Charlotte and weren't able to get here, and uh, the truck drivers and I and a couple of the other guys had to roll it through tech, and, and then we had to unload a backup car, like you said. So it just, I'll be ready to get home, get out of, uh, get out of Wisconsin, and, and uh, focus on next week. But. Uh, you know, the guys worked hard. We had great pit stops all night and just trying to fight too hard at the end. And, and uh, I guess you could say the rookie stripes were, were definitely uh, meant to be there tonight. One day event that puts a lot of pressure on everybody. But both of your spins were in one and two. Was there any reason? No, I mean, uh, I actually, I think we got three and four. I don't know when we got Legacy, but we, we almost lost it in one and two one of the times. And, and you know, same thing as what we, we fought in uh, practice. So. I don't know what the deal was. You know, we, we've been working really hard. Chad Walter and Jonathan, the engineer, and, and all the guys in the crew worked really hard to try to get, you know, something that's better on the flat tracks. We feel like this is our biggest weakness, especially the short tracks. And 
you know, we, we, we've hit on something that, that somewhat works good. We just haven't been able to fine tune it and get it where it's exactly right. And so hopefully we can come, you know, come back here next year and, and have a lot of notes and not do anything what we did tonight. Hey, there's a silver lining. You've been the top finishing Dodge now multiple weeks in a row, including tonight. Congratulations. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good to know that uh, we're, we're proud of Dodge and, and uh, they've, they've been a great supporter of ours. So uh, we just got to get them a little bit better. We got to get up there and run towards the front a little bit more. Great. Thanks, Justin. We'll go over to Shannon. Jamie down here with Michael McDowell, who finished 14th tonight. I know you guys struggled with handling, but how was the car overall? You know, we really struggled tonight. Just uh, the construction jobs, Toyota Camry. We just couldn't get it in the racetrack. And, you know, we'd fight being loose, fight being tight, but uh, we never could get it right. But, uh, you know, the guys worked hard, and, you know, we, we salvaged a good top 15 finish. But, uh, you know, we have higher expectations right now. We want to try to get back in the top 10 in the points. And, you know, everybody's working hard at JTG Doherty Racing. So, um, a little bit bummed out, but at the same time, we'll take a good finish and uh, move on to New Hampshire. Now, I know sponsorship is going to be an issue coming up in the next two races for this team. A 14th place finish, does that help your efforts at all? Well, you know, really, these, these programs are hard to put together in the midseason, and uh, we knew that we had 18 races going into it, and we were hoping to add on more, but uh, it'd be a really shame for us to be in the top 10 at points uh, leaving Daytona and not be able to finish out the season. But we're pushing hard. Uh, you know, Tom's has, has been a great sponsor, constructionjobs.com, Pacific Packaging Group, and hopefully we can uh, get one of those programs to step up and finish out the year. We'll see you next weekend, and happy Father's Day. Michael McDowell, first time Father's Day celebrate tour, I guess. <laughs> Jamie? What an impressive run for Eric Darnell tonight. Career best, it ties it, fourth place finish. You had some great battles out there, including the 18. What was your night like? Frustrating, to say the least. Um, our Northern Twin Equipment Ford wasn't very good in practice. Um, we adjusted on it, uh, didn't really get it very good, so we threw a bunch of changes at it for qualifying. I never did a mock run, went out, put it on the pole, which I think surprised our whole team. We didn't really know what we were going to have. And I thought we might have had the car fixed at that point. I uh, went out and led the first couple laps, and then we just got tight. Um, worse, is, worse than I've ever had a race car get tight before. I don't know what we had going on with that thing, but a um, little frustrating. We fell back to the field. Mike Kelly and all the guys on the crew did a great job adjusting on the thing tonight. Um, we were able to battle back. We are good on a short run, not so good on a long run, um, but we were still able to get a top five out of it, which is pretty incredible. And all, all three of the Roush Fenway cars were in the top five, so that was cool. But um, frustrating night, but we still got a good finish out of it. It was a great night for your team and for Jack Roush, of course, but talk about that close call you had with about 35 36 laps to go. Oh, what did I do there? You avoided it. Oh, with, uh, was that the 12 and the 11? Yeah, those guys uh, were racing hard for the lucky dog, I think. And when you're in that position, that's what you got to do. But uh, it was right in front of uh, myself and I think Brad Keselowski racing for uh, for third. Um, those guys got together. We were fortunate enough to keep the car on the bottom and, and not hit either one of them and uh, pull on through there. So um, we we're good on the short runs after that, but we fell off a little bit once we got some laps on our tires. and. To come out of here where we did, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, congratulations to Carl and those guys. First win of the year, that was awesome. Uh, and then, like I said, all three of the Roush Fenway cars in the top five, that was cool. All right, we'll see Eric Darnell back in the car at Loudon. Thank you, Jamie. And Kyle Bush will finish second here at uh, Milwaukee tonight, and he will head back on the helicopter and to the airport to the jet. Three hour flight to Sonoma, where he will start second in the NASCAR Sprint Cup race on Sunday. Remember, he won that Sprint Cup race a year ago, back from 30th starting position, but got a much better start uh, for that race on Sunday. And folks, for the eighth consecutive race here in the Nationwide Series, Kyle Busch leads the most laps, and for the second week in a row, he finishes second. Yeah. <clears throat> Doc, I'll, I'll tell you, it's, un, it's uncharacteristic for them, but. You know, hopefully there's not a not a trend there. He'll end up being the next Mr. Harry Gant. Look at all those laps led there. Milwaukee tonight, 80 laps. Uh, you know, and just he continues to lead laps. And, and Rusty, I mean, obviously that's a good problem to have. You're the guy up front that they have to pass to get the win. Well, he's got an incredible card. He's an incredible driver. And this year seems to be his year. He's doing everything right. And, uh, you know, everybody's shooting at Kyle Busch right now, trying to get around this 18 and this 20 car. I know the 20 car had a rough night tonight, but generally that car is up front all the time too so the Gibbs organization in general is doing a fantastic job and these guys are taking advantage of these good cars and making these things run whether it's Kyle Busch or whether it's Joey Logano or Denny Hamler or whoever's in it. Well his teammate tonight Brad Coleman had high hopes when the night began he started on the front row but uh, problems uh, in the race and ended up with a 24th place finish Dave. I think I'm going to call this the uh, what could have been interview because after starting on the front row Brad um, the contact on the track was one thing, but then the uh, the thought that you had a tire going down. Walk us through what you were feeling in the race car. Yeah, but the night started off really good. The uh, 
Rudy Sauce Toyota was really fast at the beginning. Uh, started second, and after about 10 or 15 laps, we drove to the front. We pulled away a little bit, and it started to fade. Came in the pits, and we uh, made some adjustments on it. And then when we're coming out, one of the six crew guys dropped the tire on my fender. So we had to come back in uh, next lap and, and pull it out. And then that put us in the back. And then on the restart, I got shoved up a little bit into the marbles. And going down the back straightaway, it was just so all over the place. I thought I had a flat tire. and. I didn't, and we came into pits and changed it. That put us a lap down, and then we were trying to race our way back up and uh, got spun by a 38 car, and then it's just a great night. <laughs> but turning to the positives, what was it like to lead this field for 34 laps tonight and show them what you could do in the 20? Felt really good. I wish we could have backed up at least the top 10 or top 5. I mean, that, that car deserved to be up in top 5 and, and contend for the win. Um, just uh, wish I could say rookie mistake, but I'm not a rookie. <laughs> but he's learning every time we race, guys. Thanks, Dave, and uh, it'll be Joey Logano back in the 20 for the next two weeks at New Hampshire and Daytona, as well as Chicago. Then uh, Brad Coleman will get back in the car at Gateway, ORP, Iowa, Michigan, Bristol, and Montreal. Those are the remaining races he will have in the Joe Gibbs racing car. Let's go down where Shannon is caught up uh, with our fifth place finisher. Down here with Ricky Stenhouse Jr., who had a top five finish. Uh, how was your run here tonight? That was awesome. Uh, our city financial Ford Fusion was really good. Uh, Throughout practice today, uh, qualifying definitely uh, laid down a lap a lot faster than what we thought we were going to run. And there in the race, we just uh, kind of took our time, rode around, and uh, lead lap cars or, or the leaders started coming back to us, and we got to lead some laps, which was pretty cool. That was the first time ever, and uh, I do like that a lot better than running like you know fifth or sixth. And uh, had a lot of fun, but uh, our thoughts and prayers are with Eddie. He's uh, not here. It's pretty tough on him not to be here. I talked to him after practice and everything, but. Uh, his daughter, Lonnie, sick, uh, as you probably heard. But uh, say hey to them. Uh, her birthday's tomorrow, so that's pretty cool. And uh, happy Father's Day to everybody. But uh, Matt Pusha and the guys uh, did an awesome job. They stepped up their game a little this week uh, without Eddie here. Uh, everybody stepped up on their part and uh, did a great job. And uh, just glad to have sponsors like City Financial and uh, put them up here in the top five. And that's where they belong and just glad to do it. Well, we saw the smile on your face when you talked about leading the lap. That's one thing that you've learned over the past couple races. You have off until St. Louis now. What lesson are you going to take with you to St. Louis that you've learned during this stretch of races? Actually, the main thing I've learned is patience. Um, you know, our first two Nashville, I was probably got in over my head, trying too hard, uh, way too early. And, uh, you know, I turned it up there with about 20 to go here this weekend, and it definitely helped. Uh, kept the fenders on the car all week, and uh, that's what Eddie's been preaching to me. Uh, every time I talk to him on the phone. So uh, it definitely worked, Eddie, and uh, I'll uh, probably come see you Monday. Eddie, your boys did good out here tonight. Top five finish for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. He did you proud, Eddie. Then the three drivers sharing the 16 car, Greg Biffle, Matt Kenseth, and that young man. And uh, they have combined to win three races, two of them with Biffle and one with Kenseth. Pretty good effort. Uh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. getting his career best finish fifth here and only his fourth career start at the Milwaukee Mile tonight. Let's head down where Dave is caught up with another uh, fresh young face, 18-year-old uh, Trevor Bain. And with Trevor Bain, who finishes 12th again, I think you'll probably get tired of that, although I'm sure it was a good run for you guys in the 99. Yeah, it was a good comeback. I mean, we'll take 12th after falling back to like 20th, 21st, somewhere in there after green flag pit stops. Uh, we had a tire get away, so we had to wait around and lost like 10 seconds, and it, it led to us going a lap down, so then we had to race really hard to get back, and um, you know, we, we had to pass, we got past all the other lap down cars, but we never got the lucky dog, so we just kind of had to ride right there. Uh, rode right behind the 16 at the end, he finished fifth, so I mean, we had a good car dotted in but we had a lot of adversity and had a car that we had to work with you know so these nights like this make you appreciate the good nights when you finish 12th you know I mean uh, Kentucky we finished 12th but we were running top five all night tonight we were running 20th and got back up to 12th so a uh, bunch of different ways to get there but I mean it's a good run after what we went through I see these guys making their way to the top 10 pretty soon and we just ran into his team owner, Michael Waltrip, watching his driver. And basically, he said, nights like this, they overcome adversity, makes them appreciate the good nights. What did you see happen? Well, I saw a young man in Trevor Bain that didn't give up. You know, you can easily get down when you see things slipping away from you. And he just stayed after it. And I'm so proud of Trevor and proud of Jerry Baxter. You know, they made a great call late in the race, got four towers, tires, got themselves in a position to get their lap back. And, um, 
You know, I like this team and I love Trevor. He's really, really the, the, the real deal. He can do this deal um, going a, a long way forward. So proud he's on my team. He said they overcame adversity earlier in the night. They had two bad pit stops in a row. Then they got in a huddle. Jerry Baxter got him there. What did you see and hear? And what does that mean to you when you see your team trying to regroup and get back on it? I asked Jerry what happened. He said, I can't talk real well right now. I lost my voice screaming at people. You know, and sometimes you just lose your mind. And you're like, what are we thinking? What are we doing? And uh, I'm just proud of my team. That, that shows that these guys are focused. Jerry's a great leader. He did a great job bringing them together. And we got a decent finish. Trevor can win at this level. And that's fun. He's 18 years old. He just started. And I already see a guy that can win. And I'm, I'm real proud that he's part of our organization. I have a feeling Trevor Bain's going to be in that car for many races to come. Doc. Michael Waltrip is excited, and so are we. So much young talent coming in and fusing into the NASCAR Nationwide Series. What a bright future this series has. And we're talking about the future uh, today, earlier today, Series Director Joe Balish uh, confirming that NASCAR is considering the new Nationwide Series Car of Tomorrow at restrictor plate races and road course races as soon as 2010. Guys, your thoughts? I, I think it's going to hurt financially to a lot of the teams, but I know sooner or later this is going to happen i think they just want to get it you know get it out there jerry so they're talking about doing it at the speedways and the road courses only for 2010 and uh, if that's what they're going to do we'll get ready and, and and i know all the teams will get ready and, and get ready for it that's going to be interesting to see what that car looks like and when it gets to daytona this year because i hear that's where the first race is going to be be interested to see what happens with testing. I think the first test for that car will probably be after the Talladega race this year. And it, really, the, the COT is designed for driver safety, so it is the right thing to do. But they're, they're taking a little bit of a different approach with the nationwide car versus the cup car. So maybe they'll learn something here because I'll, I'll tell you one thing, they don't really need to improve the racing that much on, on the nationwide side because, boy, again, we've seen some great racing tonight. Tremendous racing here in the NASCAR nationwide series, and as always, a great crowd on hand at the Milwaukee Mile. Carl Edwards breaking through just like a year ago, comes all the way from the West Coast in Sonoma to Milwaukee, starts at the back of the pack, and yes, the fireworks lit up early, but it was Carl, cousin Carl, going to victory lane. We'll wrap it up in just a moment. Let's show you how it unfolded tonight here at the Milwaukee Mile. The double duty guys making their way in from Sonoma, California on the jets and the choppers and the golf carts all set to go 250 laps, 250 miles here, starting at the back of the pack. Eric Darnell on the pole in the six car. He led a little while, traded the lead around. Brad Coleman went out front, Stephen Light out front a bit, uh, Ricky Stenhouse out front while the Cup guys are making their way up to the back. Kyle and Carl marched their way up to the front by lap 41. We had uh, a Kyle Busch sighting as well as a Carl Edwards sighting. So those guys did a great job coming to the front. Made their way up into the top 10. Stenhouse out in front for a good chunk of the race. He led from laps uh, 55 to 79. Then after a series of pit stops, 82 to 103. Very nice showing for the young Roush guy. Here at halfway on a set of caution flag pit stops is where the 18 went to the point for the first time. Yeah, he got the lead uh, coming off the pit road and didn't relinquish it for quite a while. He was super fast. Looked like his car, though, got looser as the night went on as, instead of uh, tighter like most guys. Carl Edwards fell back for a little bit. Then his car seemed to come to life late in the race. Well, he could really get to the bottom of the racetrack, as we can see right there, getting a ton of grip, almost getting down on the apron. He went to that race car, did a great job, had a super hot rod at Jack Roush before the climb. Went by with 45 laps to go, pulled away for the victory, his first of the 2009 season. Carl Edwards getting the big payoff for the second year in a row for the long trip in from Southern California. Now after the interviews and the pictures and all the rest, he will be headed back to the helicopters and the jets and all the rest. Uh, he has some work to do tomorrow out in California, starting uh, back in 34th spot. Now from here, it's on next week to another flat mile racetrack in New Hampshire. Well, we, thought, we heard Rusty Wallace talk earlier about how well uh, Carl did at Phoenix. Here we come to Milwaukee, flat mile racetrack. Could this be the genesis of another super run? We go to Loudon next week. It's flat, it's a mile. He's gonna run well there. Could be another win for Carl Lipp. And if he puts a win on him again next week, boy, what that might do Ooh, for the momentum shake it up. where the championship is concerned. More racing this weekend on the ESPN Family of Networks. ABC tomorrow at 1 Eastern. It's the Iowa Corn. Indy 250. And then that race from New Hampshire next Saturday is also on ABC, presented by CC's Pizza, the Nationwide Series at 2.30 Eastern Time. That's next Saturday.
Coming up next, Sports Center presented by IBM at the U.S. Open. Catch up on all the stomping and starting and rain plague yes, play sir. out at Beth Page Black. So Carl Edwards is your winner. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.